guess like the first half of a lesson. Um, so this would be like, I guess you can consider this part two. Uh, my wife definitely uh, taught on sun worship and the symbolism of the, what, what was it? The forearm equal cross? Forearm cross, equal mm -hmm. arm cross, mm -hmm. same thing. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, I'm just eating grapes. <laughs> and the impact, the influence that that actually had, right? on the world overall um it's very important for people to understand that <clears throat> when we talk about sun worship period right we're talking about the universal recognition of the sun and what it symbolizes today and uh, the origin of it and when, when it where it comes from and um when do we recognize all of this stuff when do we recognize like you know uh the 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 actual impact or what is the messaging behind certain organizations and certain things that they put things in front of us and we have no idea why they're in front of us and we don't even necessarily pay attention to it because we're not aware of it we haven't done the study to know the origins of let's say what some organizations actually believe in what they actually stand for what their what their shadow philosophy is and so once we start to come into the understanding of symbolism, um, then we'll have a better understanding of, you know, who people are and we can kind of follow what they believe and and then know how to gauge things and what we need to interact in, what we need to connect ourselves to and not connect ourselves to, <clears throat> uh, to be free individuals, right? Be independent, free individuals. So. That's what this is. That's what we're getting ready to get into. And I'm going to tell you now, um, this is part two. I'm going to be actually looking because I got tons of notes. My wife. What's I, up? What's up, y'all? I see Janetta on here. I, I okay. see other people on here, too, but the name that came up. Hey, what's up, Ty? How y'all doing? <laughs> All right. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Ty, yeah. I know I got to send you. I got to send you the link. Um, also, uh, DM me if you need to speak to me on the phone, answer any of your questions or anything. Right. Just let me know. Um. I'm kind of not in the screen really. I'm kind of like off to the side. Yeah. Okay. Can you do? Can you hold it like that and still be able to to do your production vibe? Uh. Yeah. It's gonna be what it's gonna be. My wife feels like she this left is out. About to be good. No, it is Ashley. So, um. Again, like I said, I I have tons of notes and we are gonna get into it. You just let me know when you're ready and then we can we can get started. But I guess my wife's gonna wait a little bit. Um, yeah, we're just gonna wait. We're just gonna wait a couple minutes, y'all, and we're okay. gonna allow um, people to be able to get in. That way, uh, people can take their notes and you know all that good stuff. Because we're gonna we're going in, and we are going to uh, hmm. be showing you know references, graphics, pictures, you know all hey, that good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I say I'm ready for it. Yeah, thank okay. you. Who we said that? Too. Ty said I'm ready for okay, it. Okay, that's what's up. What up, though, Ty? Mm -hmm. ready for we getting ready to get into it i'm just gonna recommend that you know if y'all got some notebooks a pen a pencil some type of pad or something or some type of electronic device where you can take notes for real for your own research for your own level of study to be able to first of all try what it is that we're saying <laughs> prove what it is that we're saying right prove what it is that we're saying uh Hey, Don't just take our words Amanda and Amanda. for it. <laughs> what up, though, Amanda and Amanda? You know, like, don't just take our words for everything that, that we're tossing at you guys. We really want you to be able to do your study, do your research, and find out for yourselves, like, if things are inaccurate or things are off or what have you, right? You might run into some bumps. You might run into some, some um, dead ends with some of the stuff that we're going to get into. Why? Because a lot of... uh what we're getting into, we like to try to get all the way to the origin of things, right? Somebody said, yes, yes. Hey, family, who was hey. that that said that? Um, That was uh, Janetta. Okay, what up, though, Janetta? And somebody said, else said, what up, though? Hey, what okay, what up? All right, okay. And so just to give y'all a quick synopsis of what we went over before, we went over uh, ancient symbols, Sun and solar worship and the equal arm cross. Exactly. That's what we went over last time. We talked mm -hmm. about the the symbol of the, the, the sun worship and we talked about hmm. 
how that represents Northeast, Southwest, which is also it, how it also represents uh, spring, summer, fall, and winter. Mm -hmm. and the seasons. The season. Mm -hmm. And we talked about uh, Christmas and, and we talked about the... Um, the the stars in the sky and the zodiac signs and we talked <laughs> yeah. about all we talked about as above so below mm -hmm. we broke mm -hmm. it down mm -hmm. s o n and s u n if mm. you want to get to that lesson then after this lesson you can always go to the lesson that we got posted up before this one but we get ready to go yes. and we're gonna give them like two more minutes bay okay and then it's all good we, we gonna, gonna get go to ahead. it we gonna get to it and i'm gonna try to really fly through this stuff when i say fly through it i mean like uh, give you guys some time. Look here. What's up, Sonequa? What up, though? What up, though? Hey, fam. Hey, fam. What hey, up? What fam. up? Hey, mm -hmm. fam. That's Sonequa. <laughs> yeah. Um. What am I saying? I'm saying, ask questions. Like, let's get real interactive in this because if you are actually um, so oh, somebody else said, hey, fam, with the uh, with the two hearts. I don't know. Somebody mm -hmm. said that. Who said that? Victoria. Oh, okay. Hey, hey what's, what's going up, on? Victoria? Oh man, yeah. Um, so like, if this is if it's something that you don't understand, if it's something that you you'd like to know, if you disagree with whatever it is that we saying, like, really, I'm I'm not gonna say uh, I'm not gonna put it in this light. Like, I'm just ready for all the smoke because <laughs> this isn't really a debate for me. It's just uh, to try to share some information, mm -hmm. and we're not saying that we know everything. Uh, but the bottom line is we do try to really dig in and give you guys a uh, pertinent information that you'll be able to use as a foundation so that you can start your own studies and then launch out into the deep yourselves That's right. and say, OK, you know, let, let's get busy. Who said, hey, share fam, this. right there. share this. Make sure y'all share this. Share this with people that. Uh... Uh, it's a blue and a purple heart somewhere. Somebody said something. Um. <laughs> I don't know yet. Right. That came up on my hookup. Okay. So we got like a little delay over here. So two, keep in mind when y'all do y'all comments and y'all say y'all comments that there is a slight delay. So when it comes up, I will tell you who it is. And apparently it okay. is, you're getting it in real time. Yeah, yeah. Maybe because I don't see it on my Right. Account. So I'll just make mention of it. I might even just interrupt myself. So let me also say this though. Again, if you got a pen and a pad, a piece of paper, a pencil, something like that, some type of electronical device that you can use in order to take notes. I'm going to be talking about a subject, and while I'm talking about a subject, I might highlight something inside of that subject that takes us somewhere else, and then I'm going to come right back to where we left off. So it's going to be, we're going to be jumping around, but it's going to have some cohesiveness to it. And if you confuse, say, yo, like, I, I don't even understand, or yo, wait a minute, I, I didn't get that. Whatever it is, let us know. Let's stay interactive, and let's go with this thing. All right. So with that being said, you ready? I'm ready. I'm, I definitely want to get into it. Um, I want to talk about the sun, right? S-U-N. <laughs> I want to talk about the sun, S-U-N, okay? And how, like, what my wife has actually already done. Hey, um, Loretta's on here, so I'm on okay. the, uh, mm -hmm. so she's saying, hey, fam, that's, okay. that's Lori, 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 yeah, hey, so hey, now hey. I have on one screen the, my page and then my, uh, the bitch I'm vegan one, so yes, what's up? What's good, so up? you can okay, see what's so happening. good, I can see both. Okay, so good. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. All right. Beautiful. So now I can go ahead and comment. We can comment to everybody. We can kick with everybody. Right. So what my mm -hmm. wife did in the last lesson um, was she actually shined a major floodlight, right, on um, the universal acknowledgement of the sun through symbolism and um, what it actually meant and what it actually means to everyone now around the world and how it leaks over into this modern day uh, time frame that we live in, especially um, as it relates to religion and especially as it relates to Christianity. Um, we have in a, 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 um, a close relationship with uh, that religion and that belief system because that's what we came out of, right? Um, you know, we were Christians and um, I had a real big, uh, I don't say a big, but I played a, a nice role within um, that world. I was something that what, what they call a psalmist. And so uh, if you've ever read the Bible, David was a psalmist. He played the harp had people writing songs and all, all of that stuff to honor God. And, and so um, my position was to do that, to actually sing, eventually write songs, uh, which I don't think I really got to that because there were, there was uh, at least um, two other psalmists, two to three other psalmists that were, that were there at the church where I was. 
I was at a mega church and um, everybody did their role and did their thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, for me, I traveled, uh, you know what I'm saying, with at that time, the the, Mm -hmm. um, bishop. And we did conferences and all of that stuff. My role was to actually sing, to help invoke a, watch this, a spirit to Mm -hmm. to emotionally put people in a state to where they could receive what was getting ready to be shared and fed to them. So I feel like that's really instrumental, the role that I played um, then. So this is why we connect things uh, to Christianity, to that belief system, because we realized once we left the church uh, and we tried to reconnect to another church when we came out here to California, we did. um, And it felt like uh, no disrespect to them. It just felt like we were in the time machine. We, We went back. We took a whole bunch of steps backwards and we were like, nah, we can't, you know, keep doing this. So it has to be another way, right? It has to be another way. And it has to be a way to where we kind of understand God for, for who God is, uh, the creator or creators for who well, the they thing, are. And the thing about it is we had already understand, started understanding mm-hmm. that when we went to this other church, right? We had already started our studies. So it's things right. that were done and things that were said that we just, we wasn't resonating with. And then at the same time, we weren't resonating with it. And we was like, I can't, we can't sit up under this. We cannot right. sit up under this. Everything that I'm keep we it a book now. see, <laughs> we cannot, we cannot, we cannot mm. continue to sit up under anybody that's not for the people, anybody that's for themselves, anybody right. that's, Where you, going you know what now? I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That, 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 that put, that give people positions because they can either get them a, a book deal or, or, or get them They're any kind to of the deal industry or, or tied like. to any, in any way, shape, form or fashion can yeah. help them glow up. Then guess what? Oh, you about to be a minister. You about to be this. You about to be that. You about to get, you don't even care how they deal with the people. Well, let you me say this. Care. Let me say this. I'll say this in my position, uh, in the church that we connected to out here. Um, one of my, well, I was asked to be a part of the, what was it prayer team? Yeah. I don't want to get all off yeah, into it. Want to, yeah. But what I'm saying is, is this, I'll say this, that ultimately when you're praying for people and you ask to be on the wall to watch, I'm not saying that you're going to get a word from God every day, but if you're on the wall and you really been putting in work, then you might hear from God and God might send you something for the people and especially for the leadership of that house. And so, um, no, it just came a time where uh, I was given something from God to deliver. And they just was like, at the time, they weren't feeling it. And, <laughs> it was like, look, and it was a warning. That. And it was a warning. See, people <laughs> yeah. don't be wanting to hear no warnings. Now, you said we got a word for you and you about to get this. You about to get that. You about to get this. You about to get that. Woohoo, Mountain Dew. Right. They be ready, <laughs> Woo-hoo, Mountain Dew. They be ready to go in. Right. But so I don't even think it was a- about that. You know, I just think it was. Honestly, it was like, we don't really know you like that. We know you and we love you, but we don't know you like that because, you know, we're no, that's not what it was. We're somebody. We're somebody. <laughs> and we're con- get, no, I'm saying you trying to get a bit of the doubt. No, no, no. I'm, I'm saying this is what I really honestly felt. And then we can get into this lesson because th- that what, what we're talking about now is extremely important this is what we're trying to break off of people. Right. Um, the thing is, is that, OK, because you don't know who I am, per se, or you don't even know who I'm connected to, which if we just go by technical terms in regards to the world standard, I just left a mega church. But they, but you know what? That didn't matter because they asked you to pray because they saw who you were. Right. They didn't know who I was, but they saw what was in me. They saw what was in you. Okay. So guess what? You saw what was in, just like people are always, you always going to have people that's going to see what's in you. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And either those people are going to help cultivate it. They're going to be your cheerleader. They're going to help lift you up or they going to look at you like a mirror. They're going to be intimidated. They're going to look at you like you mm-hmm. a mirror and they're going to say, damn, right. they doing this. I'm looking at them and they doing this. I really want to be happy for them, but I can't be happy for them because I'm looking at my situation. I'm looking what what I ain't got mm-hmm. or what looking, I'm unable to or do or unable. how this person is flowing or right. Exactly. Yeah. And then it becomes a mirror. And then guess what? Then they start to project their fears upon you. Oh, we. Yeah. So in that, in a nutshell, we just decided, you know what? We not going to get on that uh, roller coaster ride ever again. So we just going to thug it out with God. Period. We're going to thug it out with the most high. 
We're going to thug it out with the great spirit and we're going to figure out what's what. And uh, we're going we gonna to rise and fall by that. That's right. And so uh, we find ourselves traveling across the country and being a blessing to people. And uh, what we believe God has taken us back to some of the original ways of way, the ways of old, which may seem new to a lot of people, but it's taking us back to, you know, the old way. Oh, doing something new because we ain't in we ain't in no um four walls like like the church asking for tithes and carrying on. We're not doing that. We're not finna start no church. We ain't trying to start no church. So oh no, please that, don't that's even, not don't what this even is. try that. Okay, but now so here's the thing. We all actually know this part though throughout human history, right? As it relates to the sun, the sun's powerful energy has, without a shadow of a doubt, assured its role as an undisputed star slash godlike symbol of our whole solar system. Okay. I'm going to say that of our whole solar system. Oh yeah, that's cool. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? And our universe. All right. And here's the thing about it, because we actually sometimes forget. Most times we actually forget as human beings. Guess what? It's what we living in. It's a big old gigantic solar system and universe that we live in. So when you connect things to religion, religion has you thinking outside of yourself. But we're so connected to the material side of this world that it blinds us from actually being able to realize that there is a whole universe and a solar system with other planets, major star systems, ga a galaxy that we that we actually live in. Mm -hmm. So this one, is one a, thing that that one mm -hmm. thing that messes people up, mm -hmm. honestly, is gravity. Oh man, you know what I mean. Break that. What do you mean when you say that? What because do you mean? people realize they walking around here on this earth mm -hmm. and they just looking at it like hell. Mm -hmm. We don't. They don't look at it like we're in the solar system. Not you know. You have some that do, but mm -hmm. for the most part, you know, people walk around and they don't think about that. It's because of gravity. We was walking around right. floating every damn where. <laughs> right. Yeah. Had no choice. Yeah. To think about. Like, oh yeah. Space. We we are actually in oh, space. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's no, what you. I'm talking about. Yeah. That's deep. Yeah. That is deep. So gravity has affected us in that sense. Now, here's the thing: when you're doing your research and you really start digging as it relates to religion, and you want to go back, you know, uh, a ways, then either you're gonna be spending a lot of money. And searching down for some authentic books that cost you uh, hundreds of dollars or even thousands of dollars, all right, in order for you to get some authentic information, or you're gonna have to really dig in that internet and go way past and know you're gonna have to have some sense of knowing how this stuff really started, right? So, if we just go based off of the Bible, then we know that everything started in the Garden of Eden which we know geographically the Garden of Eden was located in Africa, okay? And so going there, if everything started there and civilization rose from there, then that's where I'm going, <laughs> right? So I'm just saying all of this because before I start talking about the Greeks and how they personified and pushed the awareness of the sun, right? Um, how it should actually be uh, viewed and venerated, okay? I have to go further back to the most advanced people in civilization known to man, right? On this planet, which is and which was the Comitians or uh, the people from Kemet, right? And now here, here it is again. That's not up for debate, even though people do debate this thing because... Um, most folks want to just say uh, Egyptians. And there are Egyptians, I guess, now. There are Egyptians. But before it was Egypt and Egyptians, or what was called <laughs> Egypt and Egyptians, there were uh, commissions from Kemet. And those were black folks, <laughs> okay? Uh, Aboriginal folks that were connected to the land. So... Again, the information is there uh, and the evidence is really, really clear when a person really wants to accept that, deal with it, do the research and check it out. That's what that is. Now, just on a sidebar, too. OK, here's an example of what we as a society never really want to talk about. We never really want to talk about it. And because the majority of society doesn't talk about it, 
then we have to look at who's the perpetrators of that agenda, why we don't talk about this stuff, where I'm getting ready to go. And look at the goals of those who are in power, in position, and would do just about anything to keep that position, okay? Here's one thing that I'm talking about that we need to talk about, and it feels like uh, it feels like the waves of the ocean are now really hitting the shore, and we might, you know, we might really get ready to break a boundary in this. But if we go way, way back, this isn't anything new. What am I talking about? Women rulers. Women rulers. I'm going somewhere. <laughs> okay. Now, in our modern time, a woman is yet to be elected for the highest office in the United States. We got pretty close, right? Kamala Harris was the, she's the vice president of the United States. But 3,000 years ago in Kemet or slash ancient Egypt, just out of respect for people that rock with that, it wasn't unusual for a woman to rule. Why am I bringing all of this up? Y'all probably wondering, why am I talking about a woman ruler and how is that connected to the sun and sun worship? Follow me for a minute because I'm setting a foundation for symbolism and how this stuff really grew into what it is that we know it is today. Okay. All right. Thank you, baby. I love you. Okay. So again, it wasn't unusual for women to rule. Um, and so some of these women became all powerful, not just, oh, okay, you got a position and you kind of run rule over a little bit of stuff over here. I'm talking about all powerful. I can name one person we've heard of. They've done movies of them. They didn't de depict them properly because of the country that we live in and overall just the sentiment about uh, our shade globally. But Cleopatra, right? We heard of Cleopatra. We heard of Nefertiti, right? Um, the first known thriving and creative and advanced civilization on the planet. These women were running this stuff. They were ultimately pharaohs ruling the throne. Now, this is what I want to show you guys, okay? Because I have to show you this. All right. So now, let's go there. Here is... Let's see. Here is a photo. You're probably wondering who, who in the hell is that, right? <laughs> you like, who is that? That's Marinith. Her name is Marinith. And Marinith was a female pharaoh. All right. Uh, let's see. I want to give you guys another one. Uh, this is uh Nefurusubek. Okay. Or Nefuru Sebek. Nefuru Sebek. Look at those ears. It looks like somebody got upset about her facial features. Mm -hmm. Look at that nose. Mm -hmm. My grandfather had big ears like that. <laughs> they Not that, that big. They weren't that big. <laughs> <laughs> I like banging on my grandfather. But I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, he has some ears. And so. We're looking at female rulers from back in the time, all right? Who Who is that? Y'all following us? Mm. Y'all know who that is? Somebody said, I didn't know that. Who said that? Who said, I didn't know that? Hmm. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Retoria. Yeah. For, oh, for sure. So this is, uh, what is this? Hatshepsut. Hatshepsut. And um, it, you can see this is uh, titled From Queen to Pharaoh, right? That's a whole nother story in that, all right? Um, let's see. That was, yep, Hatshepsut. Uh, hat uh, let's see. Here's another female pharaoh. And her name was Tawo, Tawasret. Tawasret. Tawasret, all right? That's T-A-W-O-S-R-E-T. T-A-W-O-S-R-E-T, all right? Um, I, I got another one for you. I got another one for you, okay? <clears throat> Y'all should know who this is. 
Look at those facial features, though. Mm. That's Cleopatra. That's Cleopatra, y'all. That's the original bust of something that was uh, found, and it was placed in a museum of Cleopatra. Look at those lips. That's all I really got to say. That nose. Hmm. Look like somebody kind of got upset about that too a little bit. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Let's see. Is there someone else that I can uh, show? Let's see. There is someone else. I want to make mm -hmm. sure that I get to it. Um, let's see. All right. Here we go. Nefertiti. Now, I'm putting Nefertiti up here because this is some, of course, this is more modern day, right? You figure, oh, okay. No, I'm sorry, Cleopatra. That's Cleopatra. So let's go back to Cleopatra. Cleopatra, right? That's the statue. And then this would be reminiscent of what Cleopatra may look like, right? What they were trying to achieve. How about it? Let's go again one more time. Hmm. Yeah, that's better when you do it like right? that. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, that's that's something else. So now we gonna go to uh, this person, which is Nefertiti. Nefertiti, yeah, yeah, Nefertiti, right? And so Nefertiti was also a pharaoh. She ruled everything. I'm gonna get into this because these are just six key individuals that had a lot to do with the sun, worship, <laughs> a reflection of the image of the sun. They ruled and they ruled not just their nation, but watch this, y'all. Watch this. Y'all see uh, Nefertiti, right? So let's take it modern day to see if somebody even, you know, recollects or resembles the image of this person, Nefertiti. Y'all should know who that is. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Y'all should know who that is. Who is that? Somebody say, hey, all my people. What's up now? Carrie Hilson. My familia. What's up? That's Angela. So, hey, what up, though? Now, this right here is Carrie Hilson. She wrote hit songs from back in the day. She's a famous songwriter. Um, let me put it back. She's a famous songwriter, right? And um, she was in the industry. She wrote some hit songs. Um and so I guess she's like on a photo shoot. She just tapping in back to her whole little ancestral roots. Like, yo, um, I'm finna do some Nefertiti. Look at that. Nefertiti. That's a real bust and statue of what Nefertiti looks like. Mm -hmm. Just put in a real museum. Man, get out of here. That Don't that look like her? <laughs> or is it just me? Is it just me? No, I mean, it don't look like her to me. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now that's Nefertiti. And now here is an image of Nefertiti on an actual wall in one of the pyramids. <clears throat> and I'll just say, I'll say it, Egypt slash ancient Kemet. Let's do it that way. All right. So now to the Kemetians or the Egyptians, the sun was what? The giver of life. My wife already told you guys that. It was controlling the ripening of uh, the crops which will work by everyone, basically all, all men, right? And because of the life-giving qualities of the sun, the commissions slash Egyptians worship the sun as a god, the creator of the universe and the giver of life, the sun or Ra. Yes, I said it, Ra. That's who Ra is. Okay. So that's what Ra looked like to them. This is a uh, this is an animation, an animated depiction of what Ra looked like. I want y'all to notice something about this this uh, figure, the skin tone. What color is Ra? <laughs> what color is that? Olive to me. Mm -hmm. Green. Yeah, green. Like a green olive. So yeah, so here it is now. Uh Ra represented life, warmth, and growth. 
He was one of the eighth primordial commission slash ancient Egyptian deities. Okay. Again, I'm gonna put them up there just for y'all to be able to know what's, what's popping. Okay. And is there anybody on here that don't know what a deity is? If, if you on here and you don't know what a deity is, then, yeah. you know, look at that. Somebody said he looks green to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know what? Can you just kind of tell them what, you know, because it's going to be people that are going to come on here that don't know what a deity, a is? deity is. So well, that people will, you know, understand because people will hear this and they'll be like, oh, here they go. They talking about other gods. Ah, <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Well, and so you mm -hmm. know, just to be able to you know break it down to people so that they'll understand, you know, that uh, mm -hmm. although there's only you know the one creator of the universe says, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there are other gods. Yes. Yeah, somebody said I don't. So, okay. So good. I'm glad that you don't. We gonna we gonna we gonna hook you up. Basically. Uh, a deity is someone who has reached a divine status, quality, or nature. A ruler driven by what? Uh, the spirit of, they call it delusions, but I say like the mindset of a deity, right? The, the creator and supreme being. Uh, and if we put it in, let's say, in a monotheistic religion, which is a religion where they they only worship one God, mono meaning one, one God, then that's going to be a religion like Christianity, right? So it's really a God or a goddess or, you know what I'm saying, uh, someone or a being that has reached a divine status, has a quality or nature of divinity, okay? And so that's how that works. Hopefully that answered the question, right? It's oh, how is it spelled? Um, and I put that up there. Uh, D E I T Y. -E -I -T -Y. I'll put it up there. You got it. Oh, okay. I'll just put it up here for you. Deity. Uh, you meaning. Move about on this hook up. Oh man. <laughs> big, big y'all. Uh-uh. 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 So um I'm almost done. Right? I'm almost done. Oh, Keeping. wait, what you putting? What you oh you putting the whole thing in. I just thought you was putting deity in there, period. No, no, no. I'm just giving them a little bit of something so they'll have they'll have again, so they'll know what's going on. For the people that don't know, right? Mm -hmm. All right. But yeah. Pardon me. So now, deity, D-E-I-T-Y, meaning a god or a goddess, uh, an individual that has reached a divine status, quality, or nature. And if we talk about this then, like how people really rocked, it was like, yo, um, it was like a spirit, a spirit, you know, that could emanate from animals and emanate from objects and emanate from any and everything. Uh, because uh, during that time, and I and I'm gonna hit it again. And it goes to some of the very the first religion, religion. right? Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he's gonna talk about the very first religion. I know when you, I know that's where you was going. Oh, for sure. <laughs> you you already know. <laughs> I already we we got to get into it, right? For sure, we okay. got to get into it. All right. So now, uh, let's see. Because wanna... you do know it didn't used to be no religions whatsoever, right? Wow. You Can know? you repeat? Can you, you do repeat realize that? that Let first, me come out of here. Yeah, first go of ahead. All, that this earth is billions of years old. Billions. So I don't know why. I do mm. know why. Mm. I know why people say a little 2,000 years ago. <laughs> shit, 2,000 years ago ain't got nothing to do with billions of years. Mm. No, no. Not so, uh, mm -mm. yeah. there no. At one time, there was not a, a religion, period. Mm. Mm -hmm. We started off as spirit beings that's what mm -hmm. we started off as mm -hmm. and we evolved through the different uh ages and millennia and and all of that so mm -hmm. we we'll break all that down to you another time but the very first religion is what he uh is about to you know talk to y'all about and um it is uh animism right yes yeah 
Yeah, for sure. I'm 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 glad that you uh, know what that is. And yeah, and go ahead. No, no, no. Please go ahead. You, you well, I know you typing, so I was just gonna give them a little sy- a quick synopsis of what. Yeah, it go is. ahead, because I'm gonna get into some some real uh some depth about it. And, and animism, you know. they believe that you know God uh, animates or in whatever mm-hmm. in, emanates, emanates mm-hmm. <laughs> or animates yep. in mm-hmm. everything, mm-hmm. everything rocks everything then he say the rocks will cry out mm-hmm. on a note one time i was on ceremony in ceremony and i actually saw the rocks crying out it was we i was like is that that's what that really mean right there so no mm. god is everything god created everything god is in everything mm-hmm. everything Mm-hmm. And so the first religion is it just was what it was. It right. was is what it is. Mm-hmm. God animates in everything. Mm-hmm. So you done typing or you not uh, done typing? Sure. I'm is done you done typing. or is you finished? Right. Is uh, you finished or is you done? Neither one. <laughs> <laughs> not really. <laughs> Have anybody in here ever heard of uh anime? Say, please spell it. I'm pretty sure he about to put it in there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll spell it out. I'll yeah. Spell it Matter of fact, just just tell me what it is, and then uh, uh, animism. So it's uh, a n. Mm-hmm, I got it. Mm-hmm. Uh, a n i m, i. Yeah. Let's see. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on, y'all. Animism. I got a million different got things it. going on. Okay. Animism. Mm-hmm. How do you spell it? A N I M I S M. A N I M I S M. Okay, here we go. Animism. That ain't what it looked like on. Oh, that's what you told me. Oh no, no, no. That no, no, no. It's not, I was looking at the. Uh, that's it? it. Okay. I was looking at the damn closed captions. You wow. know how? Because the volume is down. This they didn't spell it right. That's okay. It's so all that's good. all. It's if all y'all good. reading I'm, that, then just know I'm that ain't spelled right. Until I'm not it's even typed mad. up in there the right way. I'm not even upset. Okay, good. We don't want you to get upset because you teach. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. So I'm gonna do do one other thing real quick. But big. So uh, where we going with this is is that I show we showed you guys an image of right Ra. We showed you. Uh, that with that green skin that represented fertility and growth and vegetation life because of the sun Mm -hmm. the sun brings photosynthesis to plants Mm -hmm. right so that they can right go ahead go ahead you go go ahead they brought warmth warmth. mm -hmm. yeah you know it it made the food grow Mm -hmm. you know even even now, if the sun go away, we go away. How about that? <laughs> Just as simple as that. Bye wow. bye sun, bye bye us. Wow, we okay. You know what I mean? That's ultimately what it what it comes down to, right? Okay. And then Ra, uh, let's see. Uh, so trust me, y'all. Uh, I am gonna get to it. Uh, you up in here typing on the lesson, and lessons both been done. Oh, don't even know. I love you, but you're not even finna do me like he, that. He up in here typing <laughs> on the lesson. Because I want it to look sexy. <laughs> I want it to look sexy for y'all so y'all can learn better. Right? Okay. So here's the thing, though. I said that earlier, Ra, which is, let me go to it so you guys can see who I'm talking about again. Ra. Ra was one of the eight primordial Commission or slash ancient Egyptian deities. So this is one image or depiction of how they saw, right, the sun or someone embodying the sun. And so they gave reverence and respect to these individuals, right, because they represented a a fraction of or a part of what gave life, a part of creation. And since there was a hierarchy and there was a power structure that was developed, right, to where this was the first civilization in Kemet slash Egypt, 
slash Africa. Right. So then those people who came into power that made decisions for the whole nation were then, right, venerated and praised as or put in a position as, yo, like they have, they have power. They walk in power. So we somewhat worship them. It sounds like the same thing that happens in modern day, folks. Like you put the right, pre- the right president in office and those folks get worse. We loved Obama. He, he didn't have to do nothing when he first came in. It was just because he was black. <laughs> it was a black man. D100. That's y'all know he telling the truth. So it's like we love Obama. Obama could do no wrong. I'm not saying that we worship. We, I didn't worship I didn't him. Worship. But there were some people that was like Obama is it is Obama is. It's okay. people right now. That's okay. like Joe what, Biden. What's, is. The, what's the lady name on uh on the reality show talking about some every man cheat except for Obama? I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I she don't, really what? felt like that in her soul. She wow. felt like that. Um, so I was like, oh, okay. yeah, I don't, um, I don't know. But there's a question <laughs> out there, I think. It's uh, a question. OK. Yeah. Um, what are the things in his hands? Yeah. And, so uh, what do they represent? OK, so I'm just going to ask, does anybody even know what that is? Does anybody have an idea? I know I got somebody that knows something about this. That's the I'll give you one of them. The crook. One of them is the crook. And I'm actually going to get into that, too, in a lesson later on. I'm, yeah. I'm so glad gonna, somebody so, noticed yeah, that. So we're going to break it down. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you noticed that, though. Okay? Let me go ahead and see. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you noticed that because that's really important. Those are symbols, too. Okay? Those are, those are symbols, too, and I'm going to get into those. Everything is signs and symbols. Right. Okay. And vibrations and frequencies. Right. So, okay. So now that, that's enough of Ra, at least that particular depiction. Y'all able to see this. You kind of see the hat that, um, you know what I'm saying, he had on and all of that stuff. It looked like he was mummified or at least he had like some cloth, right, around his arms and everything. I'm going to let y'all take one more look. So he's got the cloth around his arms. He has a crook in the flail and um, he has his hat on. There's an actual serpent. Uh, that comes out the middle of his uh, forehead that's connected to the hat. That's a representative of something. You want to say one looks like a pipe. Okay. I'm not mad at that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm definitely not mad at that. Um, you know what I'm saying? And then there are wings on the hat. Wings on the hat, right? So that's what that is. I'm going to get into it. But um, that was just one depiction out of the eight uh primordial deities that they gave reverence to right then that's what it was uh somebody said what did they say they said um what looks like a staff of some sort right yeah somebody said it looks like a pipe said that well yeah yolanda said the staff's the same thing she said Mm -hmm. one looks like a staff and one looks like a pipe Uh, yeah and then um janetta said from his hat to his bandages all right there it is. Okay. So now, but that's not the only right depiction, reflection, or image that people recognized, worshipped, and gave reverence to the sun guy Ra, right? Mm-hmm. For. Right. Okay. So then uh sometimes Ra was introduced in animal form. Uh, and most commonly as a hawk. Okay. So let me yeah. give you guys the photo of that. There you go. So uh, it has this uh, hawk head, but a man body, right? I know y'all have seen that before. Yeah. Staff in his hand, right? Notice the colors. Those colors definitely represent something, mm-hmm. which I'm going to get into later on. And uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> We're going to break it down. But everything has purpose. Everything has purpose. Is There's nothing that our people didn't do that didn't have meaning, intent, and purpose. It was symbolic of something. Colors right? even have vibration and frequency. Yes. Okay. What? Wait. Repeat that because I love Colors you Colors even have vibration and frequency. Mm-hmm. And all that time when they use gold and, and all of those things and the... What do you think the top of the pyramids was? It's mm-hmm. like a, a it was like a conductor, you know, and mm-hmm. uh, they used a lot of uh, monatomic gold. Mm. 
and uh, you'll learn it. Monatomic gold is something that is so powerful. It's in its gold, but it's in its powder form. And when it is at the right vibration or frequency, it can cause things to levitate. It can also cause things to disappear. We've actually seen mm -hmm. these. Um, I'm going to have to pull it up and actually show y'all the uh, the video. I'll have to pull it up and show y'all the actual video so that y'all can understand, you know, what it is. So y'all know that this stuff is not just here for nothing. Hmm. <laughs> okay. So it has a purpose. Yeah, most definitely. So I just want to show you guys um, how they um, kind of sculpted their art out of uh, stones and minerals and other things, the uh, commissions were extremely creative and advanced, very advanced. So here's an image of uh, Ra, the sun god, right, as a hawk. And this is a display of actually like some art, right, of these different materials, um, I stones. I know y'all seen this too. Yeah. Boom, all right. Boom, bam, pow. Boom, bam, pow. Now, I know y'all done seen that before, right? Yeah, right. So this is Ra, a depiction of Ra, the sun god, as a hawk. Okay? Mm-hmm. And they had these everywhere. They would they would be everywhere, okay, uh, to give reverence, to pay homage and respect to, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Ra, to life. Somebody says, yes, yes, I have. You've seen that before. Mm -hmm. You've noticed that, yeah. right? See the sun disc at the top of the head. The serpent lies on the top where it comes out of the forehead. The serpent. I, I, I want y'all to hold on to that for mm -hmm. a second. The serpent. Yeah. Okay. Not the Christian biblical version where it's like, oh, they're saying the serpent is evil. The commissions had a totally different meaning and view of what the serpent represented because they knew what it represented. Hmm. hmm. And I'm going to break that down too. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. Um, I'm just going over these images so you guys can see you another. Kept, you should have kept a screen or she finished chewing that grape. Oh, cause you yeah. you uh you you got busted chewing. That's what that no, really you is. Got busted chewing. You want to look like a damn chipmunk, right? <laughs> so remember, remember, Ra was introduced as uh uh um you know animal figures and and venerated and praised and worshipped as sometimes in animal figures, and we've seen this all over, right? Here it is. Somebody's saying something real good. So there's a thing called what? Let's see. What what is it saying? Um, there's a thing called Angel of the North or something like that. Okay. Uh, I might be messing the name up. Okay. Angel of the North. Huh. The sun, God, that's good. You, you're you on to something. The sun, God, right? And you said it is the angel of the what? The North. north. Hmm. What do you think they're talking about when they, when, when they're using the word North? They're actually talking about a astrological location in the in the heavens, right? Like the North Pole. There are two poles to the planet: mm -hmm. a North Pole and a South Pole. Northern Hemisphere. Northern Hemisphere. So if it's the Angel of the North, that's probably at its highest peak, where it sat at some point, mm -hmm. and they gave it reverence, like, yep, the angel of the north. Remember Sounds I told y'all about mm -hmm. in December when it been in, um, when the sun being in the, uh, the southern hemisphere is getting ready to come back to the northern hemisphere, mm -hmm. where um, it'll cause spring to, to pop in. Mm -hmm. For sure. So all of these things have significance, even though we just like, oh, you know, we just kind of glaze over these statements as if it's it's just quotations and oh sounds really nice but it, they have deep meaning very deep meaning another depiction of Ra the sun god um was also sometimes seen as a beetle 
if we mm-hmm. if we think about films, right? If we think about the films like um, the Mummy, yeah, the Mummy, the Scorpion King, yeah, Scorpion King. Then you're gonna see all of these. Uh, it's uh, the Beetle or the Scarab, Scarab, mm-hmm. right? And this this is actual art that the commission people did, and it was found, right, and recovered through an archaeological dig placed in a museum. Okay, so you see what the beetle is holding up, and it also has wings, Mm y'all. The representation of this is, is, is like, no, they were on key with it. They were on key. And you can see the hieroglyphs that the wings encompass. So there was a message that that's probably, I don't don't know what it says. I'm not even going to act like I know. Like, yeah, it's saying that the sun got to rise. You know what I'm saying? Whoop, 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 display. Yeah. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Venerated to the highest deity of it. I don't know. Right? Above all gods and deities. I have no idea what it's saying, but it's saying something. It definitely has a our message. Son, our son uh, was studying hieroglyphics. He would know what some of this stuff say. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then, how about this? Well, we don't know. Right. <laughs> um, sometimes the sun god, Ra, would also be depicted as a lion. Okay? A lion or lioness. Okay. And what that represented, this is actually on the wall of uh, a um, a museum in Egypt. Uh, it represented, I guess, the most common traits, right, of what, what a lion or a lioness really represents. Majesty, strength, courage, justice. Military might. Uh, it can be both solar and lunar. Because mm-hmm. now you're getting into the feminine. It's not just all about men. Remember, I spoke on women rulers. Right? As a matter of fact, here's a depiction of one that I'm going to get into a little bit later on. I know people have seen this one. Mm-hmm. It is the goddess Sekhmet. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That big old sun disc. She got an unk in her oh, hand, a, a staff. Coming out the head. That's a cute little dress she got on, we too. Got she rocking a cute little dress. For sure. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. The sun disc. Mm-hmm. And that snake represents something, y'all. I'm going to get to it. Make sure this break is for the right thing. I don't know. So the feminine version of right the sun guy Ra because you got the masculine and the feminine when you're looking at this it was commonly referred to as the king of the beast right lion is the king of the jungle king of the beast mm-hmm. but it's also a symbol of kingly power and more so that's in the masculine side but when you see it in the feminine it's going to be related to the great mother the great mother and protection that comes along with the lioness. You know, that's a woman. Look at that waist train that she got on, y'all. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> the goddess Beset, somebody said, right? The goddess Beset. Mm-hmm, that's what Janetta said. Yeah. See what I'm saying? So y'all on it, it ain't like, you know what I'm saying? You don't know what's going on. You know you know what's going on. You gotta been studied. <laughs> right <laughs> uh here's another one i want to uh, talk about real quick because we're going into these different images and it's very important um because we need to open your minds up so you'll be able to see stuff and recognize stuff when you see stuff out here and you just driving past stuff and looking up stuff you're like oh man okay so they're into sun worship and and or they they acknowledge it on some level it'll cause you to dig and figure out well what does that mean like segment or you know a uh, beset you know, like, okay, what did she represent? What was, what did that deity kind of embody, right? Mm -hmm. Here's another one. Here's a real one. Oh, man, this one right here. Uh, This one is serious. 
Yeah, I'm saying that often. Yeah, sometimes it would be depicted, he would be depicted as a ram. I ain't gonna lie, that, that look alcohol. <laughs> right? Um, who was her next name? Is that Thoth? Who? Is that Thoth to the right of him? Uh, yes, mm-hmm. it sure is. Yeah. Thoth or Hermes Trismegistus. That's the, That's the Greek version. Exactly. That is the um that's the uh derivative i'll just say that Mm -hmm. you know what the derivative is that's the carbon copy (laughs) trismegistus is yes yes okay thoth or tahuti see they carry many names so when we talk about god understand this many different depictions many different images they got to have different names. People be fighting in religion over the names. Oh, his name is Yahweh. Oh, no, his name is, you know, oh, man. Like Elohim. Yeah. Yeah. They be talking about Elohim. It's yeah. all the same Elohim thing is to a certain degree. Elohim is plural. Elohim means plural. Elohim means many gods. Right. Okay. And when they like, oh, I call them the Elohim, mm-hmm. saying I call them many gods. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's really what. You're That's saying. what you're saying. And a lot of people don't know what they're saying because I didn't no. know. I, I didn't know either. Get up in front of a whole congregation and be like, "We worship you, Elohim." And it's like, if I said Elohim, I'm, I'm gonna keep it 100. Mm-hmm. Anytime I said Elohim, mm-hmm. I said Elohim because I want the act like I was saying like a big word. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Felt good to be like, yeah, Elohim. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I ain't know what the hell that meant. Okay. I was just saying Sam, Elohim. And exactly. I, and I said, you know, often. Right, because you're like, I'm treading on some water. I don't really know. You know well, yeah. no, I didn't feel like <laughs> I didn't feel like I didn't know. I felt like his name was Elohim. Okay. That's and it, what and, I it, felt is, like. and <laughs> it is. But when you bring that up, you're not talking about the singular Okay, somebody said something in there. I, I, I'll be wanting you to get with the comments. The universal God don't mm-hmm. have no name. Mm-hmm. Yes, it does. He is. He just is. Right. The all. The, the all. She. The all. The mm-hmm. all. That still ain't a name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the all. I am. I am. Okay. I am. So we got one more, right? We got one more uh, image. She said, Amanda said, I didn't know that either. <clears throat> We got one more image, y'all. And this is the, again, this is the image that people. Oh, one more image, period? That, no, not just period throughout the lesson. Oh, what I'm like saying that. is we have another image of okay. the depiction of Ra, the sun god. Okay. Right? Now, this one, I don't think I remember this one. But okay. I, I know that right. hat. For sure. That Definitely that hat. Okay. All right. So let's get into it. That is the snake. Okay. And the snake obviously is a male, as we can see. And it is holding what's called the serpentine egg. It's holding the serpentine <laughs> egg. What? Y'all not finna be childish on here, are y'all? We are grown. What the hell are you talking about? What? Who, me? Yeah. The serpentine egg? No, I ain't talking about that. What? I thought you was talking about me. I was laughing. I was laughing. I have no idea. Something. Yeah, Right. What are you laughing at? His wrench and Feng Wei Jane? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You, <laughs> we're gonna be adults here. I knew that's what she was talking exactly. About. So we're gonna be adults. But si- sincerely, though, um, here's the thing about this because obviously people can't handle it. So let me just take it off of there real quick. We've been taught. I'm the people. No, I'm not the people. <laughs> the people of you do represent the people of the world. <laughs> Now, look, we've been taught, honestly, that especially in, in the uh, Christian world, right, that the snake represents something evil, is depicted as the enemy, that old serpent, that old dragon. And if we go back further in time, that's not what the serpent or the dragon represented. It didn't represent something evil. Remember, uh. If you looked at the show, what's the show where the woman has a dragon in it? And people went crazy because it was like she she has her own show right now. 
Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones, and now she has her own show, right? The Isn't Den of Dragons show? or something. It's about her, her, her well, dragons, I guess. It ain't the original lady on there, I don't think. Well, I don't know. I, don't, I ain't see it, so. <laughs> right. The Game of Thrones, though. Right. Now, somebody, what is up? somebody said, oh, we didn't say nothing. <laughs> but they laughing. They got the laughing emojis up there. <laughs> 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 right? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, again, my, my thing is, uh, at the end of the day, I'm just going to go to my notes. At the end of the day, um, again, we were taught that the snake was extremely evil. Mm-hmm. But that particular snake, a depiction of the sun guy, Ra, was actually holding a serpentine egg. Okay? And so, I'm, gonna get, I'm getting ready to get into all of this for real. Still, Still kind of building. Okay? But even before I break all of this down, did y'all know that those rulers and pharaohs and the people of Kemet were so advanced that they knew how to patrol the people of their nation by the frequency, the energy and vibrations of the universe? Now, what am I saying when I say this? Because that sounds really good, but they actually put that into play in the physical realm. They did that. And how they did it was at the top of the pyramids they were able to figure out a way to emit and then send out a frequency, right? And they figured it out based off of the proper amount of resonance and vibration that it could actually keep the people calm and civilized. Now, I'm not saying that in the days of Kemet, right? Way before we talk about Egyptians and Egypt, I'm talking about we have the laws of Ma'at. There are more so affirmations, They are not like the Ten Commandments, right? Mm -hmm. The Ten Commandments has more of a negative connotation to it in comparison to the laws of Ma'at, okay? And there were 42 of them, or at least 42 uh, that most people recognize, okay? Pardon me. And these affirmations or laws... You said things and spoke to your spirit like, I will, you know, like respect water. I will save water. Right? It wasn't like, if thou wastest water, thou going to hell. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Right. It was more so like just a straight up affirmation, like I will preserve water. And so it shaped the mindset of the people because, again, they're in nation building. Right there in nation building, and they put gold on the top of these pyramids to cap them off. Now, what is gold as it relates to electricity or, or electromagnetic waves? It's a conductor for it. Conductor. Y'all hearing what I'm saying? So Just they like we are mm-hmm. go ahead, baby. Conductors. Just like we are conductors. How how is that? How is that? Do you know how? Because we are electromagnetic. We're electrical beings. We okay. are electrical beings. And right. what you eat, mm-hmm. what you drink, what you think, what you speak, all has frequency, all has yes. vibration. Yes. Okay. And so now, what am I getting at when I say this? So let's go to it. I want to show y'all this. Do y'all see this right here? This is uh the website right? Fizz.org, right? And you can see some of the subjects that you can tap into. Nanotechnology, physics. We're talking about highly intelligent people putting out information as it relates to uh, metaphysics, the scientific world. Again, not even it's not even up for debate. It's not up for debate, right? Whether or not uh science and god is supposed to be one or separate Mm -mm. at the end of the day if there is science then god is in it because obviously god created god is everything god is in everything so that shouldn't even be up for debate you know in my in my opinion shouldn't even be up for debate right that's a commonsensical thing for me but now Here's the thing. I want y'all to read this headline that I'm getting ready to show you from that site. Remember, that's uh, fizz.org. 
So again, like I said, if you're taking notes, look, this is stuff you can look up. Just, just go check it out and see what's going on here, right? It says a study reveals the Great Pyramid of Giza can focus what? Electromagnetic energy. So we not just we not just talking about stuff and coming up on a whim like oh that sounds so cool that they actually were able to <laughs> harness energy you know from the top of the pyramids not just the top but they also were able to conduct energy that when you walked inside of certain pyramids that they built mm -hmm. it would totally heal any illness that you had do you hear what I'm saying? Uh, I saw a documentary about a pyramid that our ancient ancestors at Kemet built. And it was specifically set up and housed like you would go to an urgent care place. Right? I said, what's the uh, website again? Tell me. I'll type it in the bottom of the thing. Okay. Here it is. You see it right there? Fizz.org. Uh, hold on. No, I don't see it. I'll either. put it in oh, here, baby. Okay. See, that's that's what this is for, I guess. So uh, let me just go ahead and, and hook it up so y'all can fizz.org. I beat you. That's okay. I did it faster than you. I beat you. I love you for it. <laughs> <laughs> so there it is right there, fizz.org. Go check it out. All right. Go check it out. It's in the comments, though, too. So Yeah. Okay. Ooh, yeah. There you go. So I saw a documentary, right, where there was a specific... Uh, pyramid that our ancestors built and the person would walk in the entrance of the pyramid. There was some holes on the side of the pyramids at different um, locations, like different sides of the pyramid. And the person would walk like up a, a, a concrete, like a platform almost, right? Like a stage, like a platform. And they would stand and these holes inside of the pyramids would shine light from the sun <laughs> in the pyramid directly pointing where the person would be standing on the platform. Mm -hmm. They would have the person stand on this platform for a certain amount of time and then have them walk off of the platform. And when they walked out of the pyramid, their illness or disease disappeared. That's because those high tones and vibrations and frequencies destroyed the bad cells. There you go. Not, okay. So now, this is my thing, right? My thing is, is this. A higher <clears throat> level of uh, frequency in the body results in better health. We know this. It's been shown that a normal, healthy body has a frequency of 62 to 78 megahertz. 62 to 78 megahertz. Now, this is a, a normal healthy body. That's the frequency and vibration that one is supposed to be going off of, right? <clears throat> to have a normal healthy body. If we look at this, a genius brain frequency is anywhere between 80 to 82 megahertz, right? Hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then it is above average, just, just above average or normal brain frequency range is anywhere between 72 and 90 megahertz. That's what they're saying. Like 72 megahertz is a normal brain frequency. So we looking at children that can spell in these spelling bees and uh, children that create, uh, you know, these apps and different types of products that can change the way that we actually live. They're super advanced in their thought process. That just simply means that their brain frequency is vibrating on a higher level, a higher level of megahertz. The human body, right? The human body anywhere. This is a, 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 a healthy body. Anywhere between 62 and 78 megahertz. Watch this. Normal human body from the neck up. 72 to 78. 
megahertz. The human body from the neck down. Because we're talking about your organs. 60 to 68 megahertz. Okay? 60 to 68 megahertz. Here is the thyroid. The, the thyroid and parathyroid glands. 62 to 68. That's where we're supposed to be. Right? The thymus gland. 65 to 68 megahertz. Your heart. Okay? 67 to 70 megahertz. A person's lungs is supposed to be uh, be vibrating at 58 to 65 megahertz. Why am I giving y'all all of this? It's still important. It's important because they realize that if they were to intake the sun on a certain level and gain information from the sun and do things to raise their vibration, that it would give them longevity, health, life. This is what caused them to go into a state of worship or worshiping the sun because of the value that the sun brings, period. Overall, the liver, 55 to 60 megahertz. Pancreas, 60 to 80 megahertz, okay? So now, when the body drops below these frequencies, then we begin to get into the state of illness. We move into a, a, a diseased state. For example, if our frequency drops to 58 megahertz, then I don't say we, a person. If a person's Thanks. frequency drops to 58 megahertz or lower for the most part, then they're more likely to catch a cold and catch the flu or get the flu. Mm. <clears throat> okay. So this thing is serious. Um, let's see. I want to see something. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. So now the researchers that actually found that stuff, right? From the article, they estimated that the resonance in the pyramid can be induced by radio waves with a length ranging from 200 to 600 meters. What is that? Because we don't even count in meters over here in America. That's more like a third of a mile away from each pyramid that was built. So that means about a good 10 minute walk from the home point or the starting uh, point from the base of the pyramid. Somebody can walk out and have a 10 minute walk and that frequency that they set on the top of the pyramid from the gold cap being on the top of that pyramid, it emitted a frequency that would keep the people calm. <clears throat> we just we just saw how important the megahertz are to a person's brain, body, and organs. So they tapped into that knowledge and they knew this thousands of years ago. Sun worship, y'all. Sun worship. Sun worship. It sounds like it's like, oh, man, it might be a real reason to worship the sun because the sun is powerful. <laughs> OK. Now, here's the thing. Do we find it strange that in certain uh, things placed in certain communities? That would purposely be placed there to lower the community's yeah, vibration. And mm. mm hmm. We've seen it in movies, Boys in the Hood. And you know what I'm saying? Uh, my man, daddy, he out there. Yeah, man, why we got liquor stores and everything all everywhere and <laughs> selling uh, cigarettes and all that stuff, man. He's breaking it. Somebody already tapped into the information. We've seen this already. So then it's like, oh, that's conspiracy theory stuff. That's a conspiracy theory stuff. <laughs> but... Does it really sound like a conspiracy when you connect the science to this, the, the facts of how our bodies are have been created? Hmm. Then why do we have everybody talking about low vibrational food, a low vibrational plate and what you eating now, the social media craze? Right. <laughs> hmm. Why do we find it more prevalent? Hmm where alcohol and cigarettes and 
low vibrational food is in certain areas mm -hmm. than others. What I'm doing, y'all, by and sharing is going gobbling, gobbling, gobbling and, it up, eating it up, eating it all the way up. Because we did too. When I was pregnant, I probably had because of Zeno, I probably had McDonald's almost every day. Okay. Day. Low I'm just saying low yes. vibration. I'm so grateful that we got a high vibrational sun. Uh, all that low vibrational food we was what, eating. What? <laughs> Damn, are you serious so listen somebody <laughs> listen no i'm saying watch this somebody says something that's extremely key right look here in the live church on every corner man somebody look here listen here does it sound like a conspiracy when you connect that's z the information that's cool. and the science and the factual information to this no it's like come on dude like we, we just got to really look at this for what it is you know what I'm saying? And and people feel like, well, what can I do about it? Make some decisions. For change your, your damn, damn decisions. Yourself. Make some decisions for yourself. That's how you change. Sacrifice. You change you. you, change you. I'm, I don't know if y'all had uh, caught the live where I did the interview with, with Janetta. Janetta is my childhood friend mm -hmm. that uh, we've been cool. She came to her first journey in Atlanta and she was talking about how high she was vibrating afterwards. <laughs> and um, how normally, like, she'd be cutting up in some road rage. Mm -hmm. And something had happened where McDonald's was Zeno's jam fish filet. That's right. <laughs> you already know. You would be like, give me the double <laughs> filet of fish. Right. With the extra filet made the same way, super size right. with two apple pies for a dollar. Right. That's what he would get. Right, right. That's what he would get. Right. And she said... She was the same with Burger King when she was praying to see. We wasn't even for the right thing, but uh -uh. we ain't know. Uh -uh. Now we know, but that's the past. Man, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. You live and you learn, right? Mm -hmm. But Janetta was like, normally she would be vibrating low, you know, pull up on the side of somebody ready to go rah, 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 rah. But because she was vibrating so high, Mm -hmm. When something had happened, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it could have been a road rage situation. Mm -hmm. And she could tell that the girls in the car was ready to do some rah rah stuff. Uh -huh. And so she normally she'd be, you know, I'm gonna match that energy. <laughs> when, when people come at you a certain way, people be matching that energy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so um she pulled up and rolled the window down and was like, Oh, how y'all doing or something? I know y'all going to something to the place, y'all going to something important or something. Something like that. Whatever she said, she made him laugh, made him smile. She changed the whole vibration and frequency. And I know they felt stupid because they was about to go ham. Mm -hmm. And she pulled up and they was like, oh, oh, hey, yeah, how you doing? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Be safe. Right? Wow. wow. She changed that vibration and mm -hmm. frequency because she went to go change herself. Now, had now. Had she not done that, that could have that could have been a headline in the news. The, okay, because you never know. That could have been a headline in the news. You never know. Janetta said, "Girl, yes." Or uh, in other situations, it would have gone down. You know what See? I'm saying? I'm gonna tell you. I done pulled up at my auntie's house before Janetta, and it was going down. Y'all was out there them street fighting. You already know. So <laughs> I already know, and you already know. It could have went down. I know. But yeah, when people go cool. in and they and they change mm -hmm. and they change their vibration and their frequency, mm -hmm. then it's a beautiful thing because that's how they start to change the world around them. It start with you. <clears throat> Michael Jackson said, even though Saida Garrett wrote it, but he still sung it. He had to say it because he, he had, wrote it. He had to. <laughs> man in the mirror. Mm -hmm. mm. For mm -hmm. real. You got to start with the man or one man in the mirror. So listen, I just want to give y'all, I don't want to just put something out there and it's like, we we definitely don't want to do this. It's be like, look, y'all tearing y'all selves up. Y'all got low vibrational stuff. And then you like, well, what the hell do we do? Right? <laughs> like, what, what can we do to change this? <laughs> don't just leave us out there hanging. Yeah. Right? So what I want to do is I want to just show you, um, again, there's a, a chart. Uh, this is a food chart, right? Um, just to kind of inspire you guys uh, to think a different way to make different choices based off of the information. So food, fresh foods and herbs can be higher, right? If grown organically and eaten 
freshly picked. In other words, the hertz. Now we're talking about hertz. You can raise your frequency. The foods and herbs can be a higher. You can add to your, your frequency by eating certain foods if they're grown organically or eaten freshly picked. So fresh foods and herbs. On average, on this scale, they're normally vibrating at a, a level of hertz of 20 to 27 hertz. When you think about it, it's like, oh man, that's not a lot. But mm -hmm. if you begin to add more of this into your into your um your meal body, plans, let your body drop 27 hertz. Right. <laughs> and then say oh, that, oh, that oh, ain't nothing. Shit, you in some trouble. Okay. Now, dried foods and herbs, anywhere from 15 to 22 hertz. Okay. Seems like herbs or the way that some of our um our, our brothers and sisters that are closely, cl much more closer and closely connected to their roots will say herbs, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, dry foods and herbs, 15 to 22 hertz. Now watch this, processed and canned foods, Damn. zero hertz, nothing. People be coming back from me after the ceremony sometimes be like, I was feeling so good. I was doing so wonderful. And then all of a sudden, I don't know. I felt like my vibration, but my vibration dropped. Uh, yeah, my that's because you dropped. You, like, went oh, to, you went to Kentucky Fried Chicken. How's your diet? Yeah. What's your diet looking like? Oh, girl, I'm, girl, I'm trying to do better. <laughs> mm. Mm. What you mean trying to do better? Mm -hmm. Girl, I'm just eating chicken right now. Mm. Oh, that's all you eating is chicken. Mm. Oh, okay. So you still eating Mm -hmm. blood, blood and, and death, death and accept it and expecting life from it right now here, here's something i want to move but, to something I'm, hold I, on but let me say this real quick yes don't think i'm judging because i ain't judging you can eat what the hell you want to eat oh, oh yeah most you want to eat hold choices on, hold, on, hold on let me wait. <coughs> we vegan but we ain't that funny acting so we can get I up in the camera i will just say that you cut it off oh you good mm. cut it off okay you can make decisions you got free will you can do what you want to do we not even saying that you're wrong for doing it, or you're right for doing it. Do what you will. Listen to your How, body, though. However, for someone who was faced with death, based off of the things that I put in my mouth and in my body, once I change everything up, and my wife began to study, and she like, no, this don't resonate with your with your body. Oh, yeah. Th these foods are more connected. They're living. These foods are living. So I'm going to give you this. You got to eat this if you want to survive and live and be here. So I'm would grateful. You wanna, would you want to eat food? Look, now I'm about to give a depiction. Don't. Well, mm -hmm. y'all might laugh. I don't care. But <laughs> what? I'm going to give a, a little <laughs> depiction. Okay. Okay. Now, say, for instance, you got a choice, right? <laughs> you about to go in this place and this place is going to raise your vibration, right? Mm -hmm. But you get to choose and you actually see the food for what it really is, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you go in one door and you see the food that you see is living and it's waving and it's singing to the sun mm -hmm. because it's like it's vibrating so high and it's happy mm -hmm. and it's exciting and it mm -hmm. got blood in it mm -hmm. and it got everything that you need, Wait, right? When you say blood, what kind the of blood, blood of the plant? There you Chlorophyll. Go. We need to clarify. The veins, the mm -hmm. blood of the plant, right? Mm -hmm. And then you go through the other door mm -hmm. and you got all these animals in there, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. you seeing how they vibrate because this is what you about to eat, though. Mm -hmm. This is what you about to eat because it's either going to raise your vibration or lower your vibration. Mm -hmm. And these animals that have been born from birth, all they saw was slaughter. Mm -hmm. All they saw was trauma and they knew one day it was going to be their turn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Wow. And so now, <laughs> you know what I mean? The stress. The, the stress, the everything, trauma. the trauma, mm -hmm. years and years Fear. and years, all of that, right? Yeah. Now that animal is gone, that animal is cooked and that animal is prepared. Mm -hmm. Now it's time for you to eat. To raise your vibration. And you going there to raise your vibration. What you going to choose? Mm -hmm. Honestly. What you going to choose? Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to choose the fruit and stuff that was dancing. That's just me. <laughs> right. That's just right. me. Well, what y'all, well, you know, what y'all going to choose? Right. So now here we did it. We he did. Said, come on now. Paint. Come on now. Paint the picture. Look, yeah. I'm trying. You know what I'm saying? Like, they be yeah. like, hey, the sunshine. With that song, let the sun shine in. Let the sun oh, shine in. Oh, let the sun shine in. That's, that's what the fruit that's the, best uh, the age of Aquarius. That's that oh, song, it but it changes at the end. Oh, it, well, look, yeah. that's what the damn fruit was saying. It's the age of Aquarius. Ain't that something? I'm talking about that, and I brought that song up. It was, that ain't no coincidence. <laughs> it's not a coincidence. Ain't nothing a coincidence, y'all. <laughs> no, not at all. So, Again, that was just one example, not that's not a one. real in depth example, but it gives you. It was good enough though, y'all. Right for you to have a clear a example, example of what's going that on. That was right? a good example, y'all. Right, y'all. Right. Somebody said right. Uh, hopefully, she was talking to me. What? Yes, let it in. Oh, age of Aquarius. That's mm -hmm. what Z said. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it, it is what it is. So now, mm -hmm. here it is. Let's go to uh, another source, right? to where you can utilize to be able to raise your vibration. Why, why am I saying this? Why are we sharing this with you, right? Because it's important for you to clean your act up. It's important for you to be able to receive messages and downloads and information from the sun. The sun is located in where? In space. Mm -hmm. And so if we all throw your hands up and worship God, why are you doing that? Because obviously what we were taught was is that God is way outside of us, way up in the middle of the air. He's he he is in the stars, in the heavens. Mm. Well, the sun is located in the heavens too. Mm -hmm. hmm. Facts. Coincidence. All right. So now let's talk about it. Talking about young living essential oils. Mm. Oils, 78 hertz and below. Work specifically. Where did that come from? Where them herbs come from? It come from them plants that were singing and dancing. Let the sun shine in. The herbs. The herbs too. Yes, singing and dancing. No, you said the herbs come from. Um... No, I'm, my bad. The essential oils. Oh, okay. It's yeah, coming yeah, yeah. From the same plants, right? Okay. Well, let's let's get into it. Okay. Because here it is. It says that my now bad. oils that are seventy eight hertz and below work specifically, right? With harmonizing and balancing the physical body. So this is some information outside of this uh, information that's on the chart. They like, look, look some stuff up about essential oils. And if it's if, uh, vibrating and resonating at 78 Hertz or lower, it may match something that's going on with your body. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now is it, is it just really cool that in movies they put, these Egyptian people, when they were taking baths and they had rose petals in the bath, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Or they had these different uh, uh, herbs and stuff just pouring it into the into the water. Our people knew this already. So now here it mm -hmm. is. Melissa or uh, lemon balm. It's vibrating at 102 hertz. German chamomile, 105 hertz. Watch this. Myrrh. 105 hertz. Isn't that what they brought baby Jesus? Mm -hmm. Okay. Lemon balm is in something, in an ingredient. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That I have, but go ahead. Okay. Lavender. Y'all heard of that before. Lavender. Mm-hmm. Lavender is vibrating at 118 hertz. You give people lavender all the time, don't Yes. You? In ceremony. Mm-hmm. A raven Sara. Raven Sara. 134 hertz. This thing is going up. So you said, yes, myrrh is wonderful. Yes. It is. It really is. Helichrysum. Helichrysum. 181 hertz is vibrating at. How about rose? Hmm. Rose is vibrating at 320 hertz. Mm, 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 mm. So now. So reason why. It's a reason why people love roses. It's a reason why they say, oh, a dozen of roses really make somebody's attitude, you know what I mean? Really brighten their attitude. They yes. bring them them hurts. Yes. They bring them the high vibration. What they saying out there, we need to get some feedback, find out what y'all talking about. Are y'all resonating with this? Is this okay, even working? Said, because mm -hmm. I got a bushel of lavender on my dresser and a bunch of uh, eucalyptus leaves. Yep. That's mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. In what way to use it? In what way to use what? 
in what way to use what the essential oils is that what you're saying you can use essential oils in a lot of different ways mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can just put it in a burner and you can just burn it. You can get an get it in an incense. You can burn the incense. Mm. You can have it in your your um in your body oils and stuff like that, but you have to be careful on what kinds, how much the concentration, because essential oils are also extremely pungent and strong, right? So you don't want to put Anything that has essential oils on your face because your face is extremely sensitive, mm. right? So mm -hmm. you have to be careful what you put on your face because that your face, your skin, period, is the largest organ on the body. And whatever you put on the skin, it will absorb into the skin. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> what you said, let me say, um, Janetta said, uh, helichrysum. I spelled it wrong, but it's amazing for scars. Just among a few things, uh, cut it with coconut oil. See, you're saying cut it with coconut Right, using a carrier oil. There you go. Right? Okay. So, see, people are tapping into these different things, and, you know, they may not even be saying nothing. You know what? Because if they went to church and then they sat down with somebody that was extremely religious and said, hey, girl, I'm about to, you know what I'm saying, uh, put these rose petals in my... Uh, in my bath water, girl, I'm going to throw me some lavender up in here and such. So they be, girl, you trying to be bougie? What's all that? Like, you you going overboard. Hell yeah, I'm going overboard. <laughs> my vibration. Look and here. Amanda said, wow, roses had no idea. Yes. Uh, it will change everything. <clears throat> Amanda said, I love roses. All right. So now listen. <clears throat> Again, I'm bringing this up because... <clears throat> And what I'm saying is that there are those individuals that have also studied the ways of our ancestors to use it against us, y'all, in religion, in politics, in the health systems, in the financial systems, through our miseducation as a whole, to keep us from prospering and to keep us down. And how? Now more than ever, simply because of the age that we live in, that we're in right now, the age of what? Aquarius. Aquarius. We, we already talked about it that we must be awakened to who we really are and to change our own personal circumstances, which in turn would then allow us to change the circumstances of the collective, right? As a whole, the world. This is how we make impact in the world. Mm -hmm. But you got to go in yourself first. This is what we've been called to. You got to go in yourself first. If you're trying to hold down the shit, it ain't going to work out. Not at all. You're going to continue to vibrate low because when you hold on to things and you hold things in, your vibration drops. Then he say, this is. Mm -hmm. um, it's multiple reasons our grandmother's cook with sage, even though they may <clears throat> have been removed from its true meaning. Our kitchens are our, 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 our apothecary. Yes, our apothecary. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Yes, yes. That yes. is the truth. That is so true. So okay. true. And I used to have an attitude because I was the one. Why I got to be the one? Girl, come on here and help me with my garden. Why I got to be the one? You got all the grandkids up in here, all the grandkids <laughs> up in here. And I'm the one that got to come out here and help you with the garden. I'm the one got to stick my hands in the dirt. I don't want to deal with these ugly worms and these bugs. Then I got to come out here and drop the seed in the dang on thing. Mm -hmm. Then I got to come back and cover it up. Mm -hmm. Like I had an attitude, not knowing that I was getting prepared for who I am right now. Wow. Not even knowing. Yeah. Yeah, Not even knowing, but was complaining else. about it. That's something else. Why well, I gotta be the one to go outside and find out when the ribs is, is done when I don't even you ain't even never taught me how to, to, to show about the ribs. You ain't teach me that. Hmm. I gotta go out here, I gotta figure it out myself. Yourself. Yes. Oh damn, now I'm a chef. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Now I know how to prepare food. Why well, I gotta be the one to wash the clothes hmm. and, and hang them up. I was Cinderella up in this piece. <laughs> I, wow. I ain't even fronting. I really was. Wow, wait. But looking back, when I was thinking I was a slave, really, I'm grateful. Mm. I'm grateful because I can do so many things. Hell, I'm grateful too because I wouldn't I be here. I know you because popcorn every day. Micro, look, my, my mind Microwavable said, popcorn. Yeah, talking about vibrating low. I was vibrating so low. I eat I eat cereal and popcorn, microwavable popcorn for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Do you hear me? <laughs> so, so listen. I was taught to uh, how to garden at an early age too. 
Um, I used to grow cucumbers. See, we wasn't taught that. It, it ain't no coincidence. It's not a coincidence. Right, right. If you ain't taught the garden, <laughs> damn it, go buy it. Right. Go buy it so, until you can. So now, this this is why I'm bringing this up. There's one other thing that I, uh, <laughs> we really want you guys to understand. Niggas that Zeno spoiled. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> Would you say he's spoiled now? Right. Well, when it comes to food, really? he still don't know. You know. Do you know how to cook? No. Even a little bit. No. Even a teeny bit. No, I, I don't. Okay. I don't. Well, I don't walk around talking about I know how to cook. That's not. Well, my that's what well, is that what we talking about? You know, we all have things that we're, we're popcorn really good at. and frosted flakes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you his cousin. Yes, with y'all popcorn uh, yeah. and frosted flakes. <laughs> and Sonequa said, "Yes, I guess that means yes. That means he still spoiled." Right. Right. <laughs> yes. Sis, yes. Okay. So let's get back to this. Uh, Definitely this snake. spoiled. That's what she said. Yes. Let, let, uh, that's why I did that. Uh, mm -hmm. That mean where I, the computer said the thing next to you is a spoil. Oh my god! That? And it said, "Boom!" And I yes. turned on you. Yes. That's what I. That's what it meant. Oh my gosh! Well, listen, listen, y'all. Mm -hmm. I, I want to get back to this because this is really important. We let's seriously. Um. Oh well, even before I get into the snake. Even before I get into the snake, here, here's something. Here's here's the last piece of information to really hopefully bless you guys as it relates to the sun, frequencies, and it applying to you, right? And how you should be resonating, how you should be vibrating, why it's important, and why people actually worshipped the sun. How this now morphed into, oh man, we're giving reverence and serious worship to the sun because of all of these different qualities, mm -hmm. okay? Here it is. Um, studies show that negative thoughts lower our frequency on an average of 12 hertz, y'all. This com this information comes from the fizz.org uh, spot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are people that attend MIT, they're scientists, all, all of these different people. Th that is the community, okay? This is what they study, y'all. Right. So now, if studies show that negative thoughts lower our frequency on an average of 12 hertz, that's an average, then positive thoughts raise our hertz on an average of 10 hertz. And th watch this now. Watch this. Prayer and meditation raises our frequency on an average of 15 hertz. Mm. Y'all see this? I'm going to repeat it. Prayer can and meditation. Over, can you start over? Okay. Start Studies over. show that negative thoughts lower our frequency on average 12 hertz. That's significant. Positive thoughts raise our hertz on average to 10 hertz, at least, on average. Now, prayer and meditation raises our frequency on an average of 15 I hertz snapshot net with please because guess what here's the thing we have and I, and I gotta speak to this and i'm gonna take it take it off the screen so i can speak to it i'm gonna sit up too so i can speak to it yeah it's a whole lot of religious folks that say meditate why are you meditating they got a problem with meditation meditation is demonic is it <laughs> scientifically it's there to help raise your vibration by 15. How many hertz? 15. So you going in with positive thoughts, that's raising it to at least 10 hertz if you just on some, you jolly and you happy and you good. I'm thinking positive. I ain't letting nothing get me down. Right? These are things that we can do. It don't cost you no money to have good thoughts. To go into prayer and meditate to go into yourself? How is that demonic? I, I don't get it. Right? And so people will beat us down with the Bible and say, well, the Bible don't say that. The Bible don't say meditate. Go in some of our earlier lives. Um, Isaiah went out into the field during eventide to meditate. Look that up in the Bible. Isaiah went out into the field to meditate during eventide and was distracted <laughs> by people on horses or camels or something. Jesus meditated too. Yes. 
So it can be demonic on one end. And now we're seeing the positive uh, benefits and properties of meditation and prayer. And still yet is demonic. Come on, y'all. Like we got we got to get out of that mindset. We, we definitely have to. We, it's just stuff we got to drop, period. Right. And so this is why other cultures be looking at us when it. you say you a Christian or what you Baptist or what, whatever denomination. They like, oh. My wife and I have seen it. It's like, oh, oh, okay, you, you that, okay. Janetta said, meditation is what started me on my journey. Mm. Going inside yourself, mm-hmm. like really, it was really is shutting the hell up. Wow, that's what it is. It's just shutting the hell up. You think Jesus just went off for forty days and forty nights and just talked twenty four hours a day, <laughs> seven days a week? Mm-hmm. The hell on here talking about some get on the dating site. Yeah, block them. So where, where the Can hell, you where the hell they down? at? Let me see. Somebody on here talking about some get on the dating site in the comments. I got your dating. Trying site. to raise their vibration, huh? You better date your damn mind. <laughs> they <laughs> you try- raise your damn vibration. <laughs> they trying to raise their vibration where, a whole other way. That hat? Where it go? Maybe I shouldn't have put the serpent up there holding the no, serpent uh, egg. It got they, somebody. They, they, they put it on from someplace. It's from one of our hookups. Wow. So I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna find you and I'm gonna block you. <laughs> Right. Come back, I'm gonna get you. <laughs> Man. <laughs> but, about yeah. Damn dating site. Right. So now here it is though. We're gonna go back to it. I just I just had to hit <laughs> that as a sidebar real quick for you guys to understand what's going on, right? Um, so now let's get back to the serpentine, uh, the snake and the serpentine egg. So here it is. This is the snake holding the serpentine egg right here. I'm not gonna stay here long, okay? Now um serpentine eggs it says supercharge serpentine crystal egg and stand okay these serpentine eggs are significant because spiritually it represents the providing of watch this now the clearing of thought to better facilitate meditation (laughs) serpentine is said to clear clouded areas of the chakras and to stimulate the crown chakra promoting Hold on. Okay. Promoting spiritual understanding and psychic abilities. Hmm. Now you can go there. Okay. Now, do y'all remember all of those crowns and the serpent hit coming out of the crown? Right? Mm-hmm. Same thing. Right? Most, yes, most definitely. Right. Where you got the, the snake coming out of the forehead or like the, it almost like it's just purposefully dropped almost evenly with the third eye, the pineal gland, right? The pineal gland. Mm-hmm. Some was a, some was there, some was above. Right. But still crown chakra or third eye chakra. Okay. So now here it is. That's blowing what we've been taught as Christians out of the water. It also, here's the serpentine egg. Let's go back to it. Let's go back to it so y'all can focus on it. Okay. And get an understanding. The serpentine egg also assists the conscious direction of healing energy towards problem areas in the body. Mm. It corrects mental and emotional imbalances, helping you to feel more, watch this, more in control of your life. This is what our ancestors knew. They knew it. They knew how to harness this energy. And so now you have someone that is in power, that that has the understanding of this, and they telling their people, look, tap into this. All right. Tap into the serpentine egg, the serpentine. Okay. Represents wisdom and and going into meditation. Serpentine is actually, I'm going to come out of there. It's actually a group of magnesium uh, uh, silicate minerals. It treats diabetes and hypo. What is this? Hypoglycemia. Hmm. It eliminates parasites within the body and aids in the absorption of calcium and magnesium. These are things that we need in our bodies to be be able able to to absorb it. Not no damn milk. Not no damn milk. Milk does nobody good. No, stop drinking that milk. Okay. I'm just giving y'all a little warning. Remember I told y'all. Y'all, first of all, y'all know y'all still got free will, right? I'm just going to here to give you some education. <laughs> so, I was just talking to my friend about this mm-hmm. the other day. It's to talk about milk. Milk actually 
leeches calcium from the bones. Mm. It, does, it ain't no damn milk does a body good. Mm. Milk does a body bad. Yeah. Wow. And I said, what if you walk in to your friend's house and your friend is grown <laughs> and your friend is in their 50s and their mama there and the mama is in their 70s and you walk in on your friend and your friend is sucking the milk out their mama breasts. Mm. You're going to be like, what the hell I just walk into? <laughs> <laughs> don't you think it's time to get up off that that, that breast? <laughs> Somebody said I drink almond milk. I don't know who said that. But... Okay, well it's probably Sonequa. Yes. Probably was it Sonequa? Let me see. No, Yolanda said that. Mm -hmm. Sonequa need to drink almond milk. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> right. So, but, um, mm -hmm. hey baby. What by saying so? Now you didn't got screwed up. No, you be trying to mess up my mind frame. I was about to go real good. I Come on, I, look! I was about to go real good. <laughs> I was about to go all the way. Yeah, right there. Sure. Okay, I remember. I remember. Okay, good. I remember. Okay, good. I remember. Okay, good. Okay, good. Go okay, right mm. now, the cow mm. is only meant to drink the milk <laughs> from the mother only while they're growing because it they have it has the growth hormone in it. Sonequa said, look, I bought some. Stop it. You bought some? Okay, good. <laughs> good. Mm -hmm. You know, it has the growth hormones in it. Yeah, it got growth hormones in it for the baby cows to grow up. But you got grown folk up in here like, I got to have me a glass of milk. I got to cook with this pus and blood because that's mm. what it is. Wow. It's coming from, the it's the same thing, the colostrum and all the stuff that's coming out from wow. the mother's breast. It's blood in that. Yeah. Yeah, it's blood in that, mm. and then people wonder why girls are coming on their menstruation fast. Wow, and soon, mm. or uh, getting fibroids, or or breasts getting big, mm. or you know what I mean. Uh, boys, uh, voice getting deep fast, yeah. and yeah, and they growing got full hair and, beers and, and skin all jacked up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, your skin all jacked up because you got all that stuff in your body, mm. and your body's trying to get rid of this stuff. You know what I'm saying? So Janetta said, I never liked milk. It always made me gag. Me too. Never drank it. Never in my life. Never liked milk. Never drank it. Never ate cheese mm. in my life. Never drank it. And um, people in my crib had uh, asthma, stayed mm -hmm. like constipated and uh, all that. And I didn't. But I didn't realize that until I got older. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So Nico said, that is really something. It's the oh, truth, yeah. though. It's the truth. Like. Come on now, if you want milk that bad, just go ahead and get you some milk from <clears throat> made from made from nuts. Right, it's better for you. Right. So now here it is. Now let's just go again. Let's go back to it. I told you I was going to be sidebarring, but coming back to the original thought, right? Which is now all of these images of the sun god Ra were considered to be extremely powerful, right? Powerful animals and an insect because we we got the scarab, right? The beetle and Kemet. Right. Ancient Egypt. Mm -hmm. And in uh, iconography, people that don't know what iconography is, uh, that is the images and symbolic representations that are traditionally associated with a person or subject. Again, these are images. Right. And symbolic representations that are traditionally associated with a person or a subject. That's what iconography is. So an icon iconography uh, a lot of times the sun god Ra was painted, right, as these different animals and would have uh, a staff in his or her hand, have an unk in his or her hand, the croaking flail in his or her hand, uh, you know, have wings like a falcon, have this hat on with the serpent coming out of it. So let, here's an here's an image, right? You see it? Okay, man, this represents the sun god, Ra, as a falcon with those wings. The serpent is coming out of the crown of the head. The crown has a staff, <coughs> okay? Mm -hmm. And now here's the tripped out part about this, because it's like, well, what do all that mean? You, he just they over there talking about Egyptology, <laughs> and they over there talking about oh, nobody would be into that demonic stuff. I, I didn't study that before. That's demonic. Okay, 
Well, then here's here's my question to you. America acknowledges the knowledge and wisdom of the ancient African leaders. Here's some evidence. Okay, let's take a look. Hmm. What is that? That's George Washington. There's a mural of George Washington, the first president of the United States in the Washington Monument in DC, the District of Columbia. And over the head of George Washington, if you're not paying attention, <laughs> since I just brought it to your attention, there's two serpents with those wings and it looks like a serpentine egg is in the middle. Mm -hmm. hmm. This is what I'm saying. Why is it that I, I really need people to, 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 to hit the light switch on this? If it was not important, then why would governments lean towards? Governments are set up to rule. People and nations. Yes, y'all better listen. So why is it that America would establish and take these images and this information and connect themselves with it if it didn't have any value? Mm -hmm. There's a city in Washington, D.C. or in D.C., right, mm -hmm. called Potomac. And Potomac is one of the wealthiest <laughs> cities in Washington. Yes. And, and probably the top 10 cities of the country. Don't quote me on it. Mm -hmm. Let's just say estimate it. It's very high on the ladder of, of financially well-off cities, Potomac. And how about the city of Potomac is a replica of cities or a city in ancient Kemet. Egypt, Kemet, Egypt, Africa. Africa. The first civilization. And alive before I said, oh my gosh, I'm, 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 look, I'm giving y'all a photo of the Washington Monument, the, the internal part of it, but I spoke of it some lives ago where, oh, it's placed on a actual meridian or lay point mm -hmm. in the earth that has an energy signal, frequency, vibration, resonance signal. And so now it has all of this stuff in it. This is just one thing. George Washington, the first president that has a serpentine egg with the Egypt, Egyptian or ancient commission wings of who a serpentine egg with serpents coming out of it the sun god ra what the hell is that doing in there if it doesn't matter right we have to now start looking at things and uh looking at it deeper for what the real true meaning is so that we can tap into our power right because if not then guess what happens we just walking around here living something called uh what is what is it that the uh the Buddhists call it? <clears throat> the Buddhists call it samsara. Samsara. Hmm. Samsara, y'all. <sighs> samsara is, and I'm gonna get <laughs> get into that too. I ain't gonna give it away. Samsara, samsara, something repetitive that doesn't feel good. Okay. Over and over, over and over, over and over and over and over and mm -hmm. over again. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so now who wants to do that? Live a mundane life, come back and be reborn over and over and over again. And do the same thing over and over and over and over again. No. Gotta like, get sick and tired of being sick and tired, y'all, of being sick and tired. Samsara. Okay. Um, so now Amen. Amen. A-M-U-N. 
was a God of the air in those days. And Amun's role evolved over the centuries. During the Middle Kingdom, this is what they call the Middle Kingdom. I want y'all to pay attention to these, these terms that they called it, the Middle Kingdom. The Middle Kingdom of Kemet slash ancient Egypt it's also known as the period of reunification. This is the period in history of Kemet slash ancient Egypt, right? Following a major political division known as the first intermediate period. It just means that the continents or the states within, within that continent, right? The states or countries within that continent of Africa were divided. And Ra during that time, which is the first intermediate period or the period of reunification or the middle kingdom, right? Ra became the king of the deities, Ra. And now in the new kingdom, ding, 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 new kingdom, often called the empire age, begin with the 18th dynasty we're talking about a lineage of african uh rulers like asians were the the only ones that had a dynasty no we stepped in and created dynasties before anyone else and it began with the 18th dynasty and guess what amen god of the air right? Mm -hmm. And Ra, they became famous. Fascinating rulers. Do you want to know who they were? <clears throat> I already put this pick up of this person. Her. Hath Shepsut. Her and a pharaoh named Amenhotep the third. Amenhotep the third. So they came together, right? And they ruled. Another famous set of pharaohs. See if y'all ever heard of his name. Akhenaten. 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 And his wife, <clears throat> Nefertiti. They actually set up a short-lived religion, y'all, back in the day where people, they call people, their people to worship, watch this, a single guy called Aten, A-T-O-N, Aten, <laughs> also spelled Aten, A-T-E-N. This is way back, way back in the days of Kemet, way before it was called Egypt. A sun god. This is what they called it. Aten. Hmm. And some people have taken the term Aten mm -hmm. and called it Atom. A-T-O-M. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they're like, oh, that's where that's where uh, it says in the Bible, in the Genesis story, where Adam, A-D-A-M, was, was created. Mm -hmm. Can y'all see where this is going? Well, then... According, if we go back, right, if we if we go back, if we go back further than the Bible and the story of Adam and God, how God created Adam, because it says that he created Adam from the dust anyway, from the earth. Then that means that if we go back, the sun was the thing that people actually worshiped and gave reverence to and venerated and praised. Because the sun was the source of all life. So that means that if they called it Aten, or then it evolved into Atom, A-T-O-M, Adam, like the atoms that we have inside of us. You know, I said the atoms, the building blocks. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then it evolved into Adam, A-D-A-M. Mm -hmm. It still means that the sun had to give it life because the sun is the thing that, what? feeds the seeds in the darkness from where things grow, if that's where Adam came from. Mm -hmm. So it still all points back to the sun, S-U-N. So now they just said, here it is, Nefertiti and her husband, 
Ak Nat and said, we're going to make everybody, instead of everybody worshiping all these guys and, you know, because animism is there. Animism is there. And so they like, no, we, 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 we in power now and we're going to have everybody worship one God. We're going to call it Adon, A-T-O-N or spell A-T-E-N. And it's depicted as the solar disk, right? A lot of times emanating rays in the people of, of hands, of human hands holding it. Mm-hmm. Their state call to the nation was extremely brief, though. That's a whole nother story within itself, right? Where they ruled, it was a short rule. But they were the first to create this monotheistic form of worship and worshiping one God. It was the solar disk, the sun, Aton. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that gradually became associated with solar deities. And so now here it is, uh, right? Uh, Ra or Amen Ra. Then became nationally worshipped as God. He eventually merged with Ra, the ancient sun god. And they became one. And so now you got two deities that have merged. Some people call it Ra Harakti, right? Who they get the term Horus from. Horakti, H-O-R-A-K-H-T-Y, as in Horus. But the original version of Horus, because that's the Greek version. Horus, that's the Greek version. We got to go to Haru. Mm -hmm. Haru. And so they would call it then Ra Haru Akti, right? Or Harukti. Harukti. Which meant two horizons. Now, in the new kingdom, because remember, we're talking about a time frame, a new kingdom when the guy Amen, right? We already broke that down. The guy Amen, who was Amen, Amen Ra, a God known right from the Commission or Egyptian time frame, held to such titles as the Supreme God. Why? Because Nefertiti and her husband came together and said, we are going to make people worship one God. So they said, this is the supreme God. And that's where this picture of the ram became known for expressing fertility and war. They felt as though it was the two most powerful forces in life. They believed that it both could create and end human beings at the same time. Now, originally, Amen Ra was known as Ra. I keep saying the word Ra, 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 R-A, right? Ra. Okay. But peep this. <laughs> Ra. Actually, in one sense, stands for the term right ascension. Ra. Hmm. Right, right ascension. I want y'all to keep that in mind because astronomically, see, here's another thing with religion. Religion puts people in a box. It holds them in a holding pen. You are not allowed to look at things from a different perspective. You can only look at it from the one facet or the one piece of information that they give you. And they say, this is the do all, the end all and be all of all information. But like we spoke of earlier, we live on a planet, but gravity hold us, holds us here on the planet. If we didn't have gravity, we'd be floating out in space because mm -hmm. we're on a planet that is floating in the middle of space. Yes. Okay. The planet ain't on the ground. The planet isn't Even like though we got a ground. Right. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So no, that's not the business. Right. So astronomically, what does Ra mean or right ascension mean? 
It is the equatorial. I'm going to give you the terminology that the that people that fly in space use. And then I'm going to break it down for you. Okay. So now let's get to it. It is the equatorial coordinate specifying the angle measured eastward along the celestial equator from the vernial equinox to the intersection of the hour circle that passes through an object in the sky, usually expressed in hours, minutes, and seconds. That sounds like it has something to do with time. Used with what's called a declination or declination or deck for short, D-E-C, and deck is the celestial fears equivalent to or of latitude. So now, why was it? Because people ask, well, all they was doing, they was just looking up in the sky and they was just look. Well, what they were doing were they were looking now into the universe, into the sky, and they were able to measure certain degrees and go, this is the equivalent equivalent to latitude. You're talking about travel now, navigation, mm-hmm. right? So if you had, uh, for instance, the deck and it stayed on a positive side or the negative side, right? The positive would refer to the North Pole, pointing towards the North Pole, and the negative deck would then be in respect of the South Pole. Let me give you an image. So you'll really be able to understand it. So declination. This is the celestial fears equivalent of latitude. You see planet Earth is there. The poles that that come or emanate from the Earth. It's tilted on its Mm -hmm. axis. Mm -hmm. That's what Earth is. So now the North Pole is at the top. The celestial pole. North celestial pole. That means that it is now going into a positive declination. And the southern celestial pole is going in a negative declination. This equates to latitude. So this is how people can actually travel and navigate. So let's go back. It says the equatorial coordinate, y'all see that? The the celestial equator, that's the orange band around the earth. Mm -hmm. The equatorial coordinate specifying the angle measured eastward. Well, which side is east on? East side is towards the ecliptic side. So east side is when you want to, you know, pass downtown. (laughs) <laughs> Detroit. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> That's the east side, y'all. Oh my God. <laughs> so now you got it's going measure eastward. <laughs> and the west side is when you're going towards the Southfield Freeway. And then oh north is when you're going towards Northland. <laughs> Everybody. And then south is when you're going Wait, towards Wait, let me put you Fairline. up on something. Let me put you up on something. Let me put you up on something. <laughs> That's how I learned. That's what I was gonna say. That's that's how she learned her directions to be able to navigate. (laughs) She took but but peep it though. It's look, you go back to the old school way. I'm looking at landmarks and I say, Oh, so this means it's eastward. This means it's you know saying westward. Yeah, going in this direction. If I go in this direction, I just keep going this direction. I'm going, I'm going the southern way. Have y'all ever thought like that? Northland fair lane. (laughs) <laughs> Downtown. Oh, let me put you up on something else, man. Up. Let me put you up on something else. What? Everybody on this live ain't ain't in, from Detroit. They don't I know, but I'm Detroit. saying for the people that is. Oh, you just specifically talking to them. Yeah, I don't know oh, where wow. uh okay. I'm still fe- No, Burbank is like <laughs> Burbank is going east, ain't it? Ma'am, we ain't finna talk about I'm trying to figure out we all the way in here in California. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no still figuring disres- that one out. I'm still figuring that one no, out. Look, no disrespect to my. Let me look in the cat. No disrespect to everybody that's still there in the <laughs> cold. Said, of- East is going towards the red sand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. So now we kind of have an. Hopefully, we have an understanding of again sun worship, the rotation of this, and the importance of it. Right. Uh, Amen and then Ra coming together to create Amen Ra. Remember the word Amen <laughs> was 
What? Oh, Lori said, that's how I know to travel around Detroit. Okay. Wow. And then when you when, when you're not sure, that's wow. when you gotta pull out the navy. Yeah, you like <laughs> so you hold on to these landmarks and you like, well, that's going eastward, or you know what I'm uh -huh. saying? So you know you like get I'm lost. going towards Northland, so that means that's like six miles, seven miles, See, eight miles, nine miles, yeah, yeah, miles. Yeah, it, it's going towards wow, Northland, yeah. right? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, so now listen to this. Remember now, I told y'all to hold on to this term right ascension right i just gave it to y'all astronomically mm -hmm. as it relates to right the sun remember the commissions built cities based off of looking in the stars and then finding ley lines or meridian points where there were more energy located geographically in some areas than others so they knew how and where to build certain buildings to allow certain things to take place this all correlates to each other mm -hmm. okay so then it's like, okay, right ascension, um, astronomically, this is what we're talking about. But now let's talk spiritually, because we've been talking about the depiction of these eight primordial, right, versions of these deities and gods that emanate from the sun. Mm -hmm. And so the guy Ra came in all of these animal and then one insect form or depiction for them to relate to. OK, and now we we getting ready to go into even a deeper spiritual sense that. The right ascension or Ra is also known for the process of spiritual growth and soul lessons that are required to do this. Watch this. Raise your vibration, because once you tap into the right hemisphere of your brain. This very important the right hemisphere of your brain or Jesus Christ saying, I sit at the right hand side of the father. Yeah. Then it's now all coming together and making sense. Why? Because you're supposed to ascend and in the new kingdom hmm. that Jesus represented the new kingdom, which correlates to what the new kingdom uh, that the, commissions we're talking about or symbolic of the new kingdom the empire age which began with the 18th dynasty right with Hatshepsut and her husband Amenhotep the third hmm all of them a new kingdom so now he's bringing in a new kingdom saying that the kingdom is at hand go within the kingdom is within you and you're, he said, he's sitting at the what? The right hand side of the father, the right hemisphere of the brain to create right ascension. So now right ascension is spiritual growth. It's going to help you through the process of spiritual growth and spiritual lessons that's going to require to raise your vibration. It's going to raise your consciousness or mindfulness. It's going to raise the levels of unconditional love and compassion and willingness, right? And the ability to serve others. This is where all of this sits at in the right hand side. Mm -hmm. That's where all the power is. It's the power mm -hmm. is on the right hand side. The ascension process involves healing wounds of both. Watch this. This life and past lives. Remember, I threw out a term. What was it called? Sam so what? Sahara? Or Samsara? Something like that. Yeah. Sam Sahara so or Samsara? Samsara? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, a part of right ascension is the ascension process that involves healing wounds of both this life and past lives. And the more wounded a person is, then the more, watch this, the characteristics distorted their perspective is the more reactive or easily triggered they are mm. the more they blame others right or outside of themselves outside circumstances for their problems the more selfish they may appear mm. as they can wind up in survival mode always i'm a hustle i'm running around here i'm I got to get it i can't i'm man i am got to hurry i can't do this i can't do that i ain't got no money i ain't got this i got i mean you that's in survival what mode that's what they saying right yes. or they're lashing out to simply protect themselves they're in defense mode all the time mm -hmm. the more healed a person is in this 
process of right ascension is that now people are, here it is, when they're more healed, they're more likely or they're more closely aligned with the truth. They have a more pure and often higher vibration. They are more capable of unconditional love and compassion towards others. They can respond carefully to situations rather than reacting. They are in a divine power. That means that they are connected to spirit, to source, to the all, causing them to easily step out of what? The victim mode, coming out of survival mode. Now they're thriving and prospering. They're attracting things to them. They're not chasing and running it down. They're speaking because they are in prayer. They're in meditation. They are mindful about the things that they eat, um, the, the environment that they're in. All of these things that they intake through their eye gates, their ear gates, mm. what they speak out of their mouths, their spirits and their hearts, because they understand that, listen, we're vibrating. And everything that is attached to us and connected to us has a signature, hmm. a frequency, a level of resonance. So this is the other reason or another reason why Ra, the sun god, was recognized as such. It was said that, here it is, watch this. He was not only, oh, he not only created himself. I want y'all to understand that. We have we have we hear people that have these debates about God, right? Is God really God or did somebody create God? How did how did all of this how did God become God? <laughs> hmm. And for most people, that's too deep to even get into. They like, man, I ain't even trying to blow my brains uh left with that, right? <laughs> I got too much stuff on my plate to be trying to think about who created God and if God was just self but Understand, if we revere, let me put it like this. For those of you that have received a college education, then what's going to happen, especially here in America? They're going to place in front of you Greek philosophers, and they're going to say that this is a standard in which you should think, or these are the thought processes that they went through that most people follow or fall in. Hmm. And somehow, some way or another, somewhere along the line, they begin to, to detach themselves from the source. I went to college. I didn't graduate. But I got a 3.8 up until the point that I walked away. <laughs> no disrespect to anybody that went to college and has like, you know. Right. A doctorate in, you know what I'm saying, the PhD and the ABC and the XYZ. It's cool. Actually, I, I admire I like it. X, y, Z. Yeah. yeah, I know you do. Yeah, don't you? Yes, I'm. I'm grateful for the X, Y, Z. Yeah. But here's the thing, though. <laughs> if we go back, Ra, they say the people that that gave reverence to Ra, Ra created himself. But then he also was the creator of the entire universe. Now, if that's so. If that's so, then there are some creatures on the earth that on the earth that also have the ability to do the same thing. I'm more than sure that the creator would just wouldn't be the only person to be able to live without any substance. They don't it, they don't need to eat food <laughs> to survive because God don't need food to survive, right? There's at least three that we know of, right, commonly, three, that we know of that use what's called actually photosynthesis, which means that photosynthesis is about light. God is light. Mm -hmm. So if God is light, it photosynthesis is about recreating itself. Mm-hmm. And as well, it lives solely off of the sun because the sun is the greatest light that emanates over this planet. 
So now plants, algae, and different species of bacteria can make their own substance through the process of photosynthesis. They harness, what is photosynthesis? They harness sunlight to drive the chemical reactions in their bodies to produce, watch this, sugars to energize themselves. Wow. We still on sun worship, y'all. I'm trying to give you a better understanding of why people would even do it. it. Because it's connected to all life. This is the sun is all powerful. Okay. And they revered it as such. And so now the first, I said there are three. It's really actually it's really four that we know of. Three, though. Here's three that I'm going to mention for sure. The green sea slug. The green sea slug. Hmm. That thing right there. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, the green sea slug. It's an extraordinary, beautiful slug living in the waters of the east coast of the United States and Canada. Yes, its distinctive feature is green colored leaf shaped body. The slug eats, watch this, algae. Hmm. Hmm. But it's not its only source of energy. Photosynthesis enables them to live without what? Eating. They can spend their days laying out in the sun, just like the plants and green algae, get their energy through photosynthesis, right? Symbiosis, right? that enables algae chloroplasts to work for slugs, right? To be able to live and survive. That is one form of life that we know of that can self-generate and doesn't need any source or doesn't need any food-like substance to survive, Mm -hmm. only off of the sun. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now here's a second one. Here's the second species. The P aphid. The P aphid. Hmm. Look at that. The P aphid. This is an insect living worldwide that feeds on plants like legumes. Now it feed on plants. Now how many of y'all been and saw that dang on thing and be running because you think it's about to attack you? I know I would. Right. And it ain't even thinking about us. At all. (laughs) It has a mission. Understand (laughs) that it has a mission in life. In its existence. It exists for a reason. So even though they look like other insects, unpleasant or even terrifying to some people, Mm. they truly are amazing. P. aphids are capable of producing carotenids, okay? Pigments found in chloroplasts, I use that, which is photosynthetic organelles. And chromoplasts is what gives them their kind of orange, reddish color, greenish color, helping Watch this ingredient, chlorophyll, because it's it's hanging, it's crawling up a what? A plant right now. Mm-hmm. And chlorophyll is found in plants, along with photosynthesis. That whole situation, if they don't get enough of chlorophyll and enough light, then they're color will then simply turn watch this watch this their color will turn white does that sound familiar Hmm. Hmm. it also seems as though the carotenoids serve not only as a beauty compound to give them their skin tone, their color and everything, but they can also be used to convert sunlight into energy. Talking about photosynthesis, the sun god, Ra. Okay, here's the third. I want to give you the third. 
Here's the third species. The spotted salamander. Now, just like the sea slug, it lives in symbiotic relationship with algae. They were found in embryos of the animal. animal. The salamander's embryos are found in clear colored eggs laid by the females on the underwater plants close to the surface so that the light can what? Reach them and shine on the eggs. Kind of like a, a snake mixed with what an up? alligator. Mixed yes. With, uh, with a lizard mm -hmm. and um, a damn scorpion and crab almost. Yes. It seems like this green algae substance is going to help the embryos get everything that they need for energy and for growth and for development from the sun. So while at the same time it's providing an extra source of energy, this in turn increases their chances of survival. And spotted salamanders are the highest developed animal species and the only ones among all vertebrae that can directly benefit from photosynthesis. Usually the immune system of highly developed organisms will prevent such symbiotic behavior, but... Here's a fourth one. You probably heard of a trend called breatharism. Breatharism? Mm-hmm. Is that what a breatharian is? A breatharian. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Guess who are breatharians? Human beings can he's choose a, to be. Oh, she said, well, he's a cutie little <laughs> salamander. Uh -huh. <laughs> what made him cute? Them little eyes? Breathitarian. I thought the yellow things were his eyes, and I was like, oh, not his eyes. Yes. So now here it is. They have a we're we gonna get we're gonna do like a uh a, a part two to this. Oh, I most think? definitely, because I I'm I'm just sc scratching the surface. Yeah, and then we gotta get to the uh the lunar yes, the lunar too. side. Yes, yeah, we gotta get to that side too, y'all. So now here it is, whether we believe it or not. Humans can sustain, sustain themselves without food and water for the most part. Very limited amounts of it. Surviving only on light and air. Okay. So now, if you go on YouTube and you type in the word breathitarian, right? Breathitarian. Let me go ahead and hook it up. What you about to type it in there? Mm -hmm. You got it or you want me to type it? Oh my gosh, you. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then what's going to, we need to. Breathitarian. But I'm saying like, we need to like mm -hmm. cut this short too, because if we don't, mm -hmm. then I'm going to be like nodding on the screen. Oh, you going to sleep. I'm <laughs> wow. I'm okay. up in this piece. You like, fighting. You fighting over here. With you rope a dope. You do you on a rope a dope. <laughs> okay. So let me just give you then a, a quick preview of some of the stuff that I will hit then on. It'll be part three. Okay. We're gonna talk about again the sun guy Ra, right? The sun god, sun worship, and how pentacles play a big part in that. Pentacles and pentagrams. Right, pentacles and pentagrams. This is what I'm gonna give you, just so you'll be able to know what the what the hell is going on. Yeah, didn't did, he didn't give y'all homework last time? Did he? No, <laughs> that was the first time. Here's a pentacle. Pentacle. Okay, that's a pentacle. It is a star, right where the top of the star is uh, directly pointing straight up, right northward. And it is inside of a circle. People get afraid of these uh, symbols mm -hmm. because they've been miseducated. They don't know. They have no idea. So they're like, oh, my God. I used to. I used to as soon as I see it, I'll be like, damn, that's witchcraft. That's on that movie. That's on the charm. They right. Be like, oh, exactly. They be using that damn circle with the star in the middle. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we talking about here it is. This is a resource or a tool. Have to understand people can use it for good. People can use it for evil. This is something that represents something good. As a matter of fact, I'll just tap in here. This is a 
pentacle. And this represents, watch this, the five wounds of Jesus. The five wounds that Jesus had to endure. The crown of thorns on his head, right? Do you see where, uh, let me see, let me pull this up just a little bit for me to be able to see. Um, the line that goes across his side, two, three, four, where you see three and four, didn't they stab Jesus in his side? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's inside of the pentacle. You see the star inside of it, right? Can you see the image of the star? Mm -hmm. Five wounds of Jesus in the palm of his hands and in his feet. Okay, so there you have it. Head, hands, side, feet. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Wow, that yeah, that you, you're really tired. So that's, that song, right? that's one thing that we're going to really break down and really get into, okay? Oh, one other thing, the reverse of it. So if you got some children around or you're really afraid, I'm, I'm going to say now, um, just uh, put your hand over their eyes, or if you're afraid, turn your head or whatever. You know okay, I said you were going in deep tonight, bro. And Yolanda said, uh, yes, like the Chrysler logo as well. Mm -hmm. For real, for real, yes. And then Janetta said, You tired, friend? Yes, girl, I'm tired. We just got back from Joshua Tree. I'm tired. I thought I was like, I thought I was well rested. Right. So let me get, I know. So let me give you an example of what a, oh. a pinnacle, just real quick, because we're going to go, I'm not going to teach on this. But you're going to have to, if you show this, mm -hmm. you're going to have to teach something on it because you just can't be leaving people with this image without <laughs> telling them what it is. You can't do y'all like that. I nah, mean, you nah. said hurry up and cut it short. So I'm like, okay. Now you don't be cutting it short on this one. No, no, no. I won't leave it off I'm on that. I'm going to need them to understand what it is. Yeah, I won't leave it off on that. Because they'll be like, damn, he just yeah, left, left it on that. On that. Yeah. Okay. So I, you know what? Never mind. I won't even mention it. I won't even bring it up. But I think y'all kind of know where we're going if we're talking about pinnacles and and uh, pointed star and everything, right? And intention. I Man, it's so awesome. It'll it make us research. <laughs> so she said, she Who said that? Amanda, Amanda. it'll make okay. us research. All right. So understand, like when people are moving um, in in a different frequency <laughs> with intention and they choose to now do the opposite of. Right. If you're a light bearer and you and you go ahead more, and play that show the thing. OK, that's cool. Yeah. So if you're a light bearer and you're moving in a particular uh, vein, right, morally, then you're you're moving towards the, the spectrum of light. Right. If you're moving towards the spectrum of darkness, then you'll probably see this logo, right, uh, as a pinnacle. And so this is uh, the star flipped upside down. So where the top of the star was pointing northern, the northern right pole, mm -hmm. they have the top, the top of the star now inverted. So it's now pointing southern or the right, the south way. And that's supposed to represent the star. It's supposed to look like a goat because goat represents sin, mm -hmm. right? Biblically, where they they would cast sin out of their community and villages and tribes by, right, placing the sin on the forehead of the goat and then, you know, uh, kicking it out of the community. Yeah, scapegoat. Right. Okay. Um, but the names here, look, the name. Samuel, Samuel, basically, oh, he's showing it, or man. Lilith. That's a whole nother lesson within itself. Okay. So, but, but if you're moving those. on the side of light, then this pinnacle would be this. And now here it is. What does it represent for real? I'll go back to the original one, just real brief, because it, it's seriously detailed. You have all of the elements, right? Fire. The right hand, uh, the bottom right leg of the five pointed star, water, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, then you have earth and air. Now, the completion of that is spirit, or what they call back in the day, ether. 
spirit, the heavens. And that circle represented, right, eternity or infinity or, mm -hmm. right, everlasting. Mm -hmm. Because God encompasses, right, the earth, fire, water, air, everything. And so this symbol was used as protection against anything evil or dark. That's all I to say about that. But there's a lot of information for and towards it, and we can get into it. Yes, they are. <laughs> Somebody asked a question. Yolanda. And you, okay, so you're going to read that question. What's the question? She said, are those Hebrew symbols? And that's on the, uh, the other star that you had. Mm -hmm. Yes. Up there. Yes. Would you show it again so people can see just in case the people didn't see? I'm not going to leave it on that, though, because okay. I don't want to leave it on that note and people be like, there ain't no worshiping the devil. <laughs> <laughs> you know how people be walking and come in on this stuff. We're teaching about sun worship, how it evolved, how things get flipped, this, the symbolism, how it all leaks into religion, leaks into politics, leaks into finance. It leaks into everything. Right? Okay, so uh, they just totally did the opposite. This is a pentagram. It is without the circle, right? So there, there is not an ever-encompassing presence, but it still has power because you're talking about fire, water, right? Uh, earth and air, and then spirit yeah. still represents that. OK, so um, we're going to get all off into that. We're going to. Um, man, we're going to talk about how people worship bulls. There was another. Uh, depiction, you take it off an embodiment, yeah, embodiment of. Uh, the sun guy, Ra. And so if they chose a bull that was worthy enough that they felt had the characteristics of the sun guy, Ra, then, oh, they would set that bull up something nice, right? And so uh, we, we just, we're talking about different things that come down from, from the origin of this all the way back, right, to the beginning. They have the celestial cow. We're talking about the eye of Ra. What is that all about? How can you know where you're going if you don't know where you're being? Man, the eye of Horus. People heard about the evil eye, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the eye is evil. Mm -hmm. So they have to know that. Why do people wear this evil eye and what it really represents? The eye of Horus or the eye of Haru, really, because that's the original uh, name, right? So... We're going to get into all of this as it relates to um, the Bible. We're going to remember, I said, we're going to get into the Helios, Biblios. That's the sun book. Oh, that was the dang on homework, wasn't it? Helios, Biblios. When you just said that, it mm -hmm. was Biblios. Biblios. <laughs> Your ass is tired of Helios, <laughs> Biblios. Yes. And it was. Um, and what was it? We what don't have was some... it, y'all? Mm -hmm. Helios, Biblios, and what else? Because I'm going to know if y'all were studying or not. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to have some scriptures too about it, about you light said, and about uh, the sun. This and is about amazing moon. knowledge. Why, well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. This is worship, our worship, worship, right? And Helios, Biblios. You ain't even broke them down yet. I have had to build them, them a strong foundation so that they understand. They have to walk with us, so they really get. It's not just this. Is not. Let me say this. This isn't typical where people just start talking about yeah, the pharaohs and the kings worship and you know what so we right. worship and praise in Helios, Biblios. Yeah, That's if you go, if you are. go into the origin of the word worship, you'd be like, I'm not trying to worship. No, yeah, you it's will. not what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to do that at all. Yeah, because when you really understand what it is, yeah, then you, you like understand no. what it is. No, I'm not worshiping. I'm not worshiping nothing and nobody. Cause, no, <laughs> right? 
And I did ask y'all to do a study on that too. The word worship and Helios Biblios. Does anybody have any type of information? I mean, any type of feedback on that before we shut it down? Because yeah, we can't ready to shut do it down. Y'all homework. Does anybody know anything closely, remotely to the origin of the meaning of these things? What does worship really mean? What does uh, Helios Biblios what does that really mean? What is that all about? And tell me, does the Holy Bible, the Holy Bible, the Holy Bible reflect some of the origin of what the Helios Biblios really is? Yolanda said, I looked into it, but I'm not done. Okay. So we can get it, really get into it. Right? So right. Um, this is just, like I said, this is just a portion of it. Um, and we do have a conclusion, so, uh, we'll get into it, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this. My thing is, is that the whole purpose, the whole reasoning behind doing all of this is to break down the mindsets of people that, uh, don't know anything at all about this to, to hopefully enlighten them, to, to point them in the right direction, right? So that they'll be able to now show themselves approved, right? A workman, right? Mm -hmm. Studied. <laughs> because it's, the Bible says you got to be a work. What is a workman? This is work. This is just not, oh, I show up and I sit for an hour, you know, an hour and a half and let somebody talk to me and I don't do no reference checks or nothing. Then I go out and eat some food and then I watch the game or go to sleep and then get back to my life and I'm still trying to figure stuff out. It's no, no. We're in a different age, ma'am. We're in a different age, sir. Amanda said Helios got, uh, what she said? Helios got real, especially after uh, last live getting assignment. And then he loved us, and I really enjoyed this immensely. I see y'all, and I drop everything and come learn. Wow, thank you, thank, thank you, you so much. Said, Me too, y'all changing my life. Wow, thank you so much. Thank it you. is, it how is, about, how about you changing your life, right? And how spirit, spirit, because you the one made the decision to come on here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You the one made the decision to come on here. So how about you changing your life? You the one making the decisions. You the one got the free will. You the one chose. You the one said you were sick and tired of being sick and tired, and you did something about it. So, peep so this. thank you. Yeah, peep this, y'all. At the end of the day, it really is about us going back, not being afraid, right? Not being afraid to really dig in and um, get to a place to where it's like, all right, um, we here to do this. We here to actually, uh, we really here to make some things happen. We here to make some things happen. We here to really do some things so that that way we can gain more information, right? We can gain more information and we can empower ourselves in a way to where it's like, we can use that. We can use that to our advantage, right? Who wants to to uh, be in a situation where you still doing the same thing you did 20 years ago? Walking around clueless, trying to figure out what's real and what's fake. And you ain't getting no answers. Something that you're able to apply for your good. Like, dude. Who, who wants to just like live life regular anymore? No. Right? So it's these things that we um we vow to do, we've been led to do by spirit in order to kind of break some things down so that people will be able to have a better understanding and they can strengthen themselves, empower themselves to not have somebody just run game on them and then say, you know, you got to pay tithes because of something. Because it's say that in the Bible. And then you got to tell me what tithe, tithes really mean. And you got to show me where, in one instance, you're using a person in the Bible as the founder of 
a relationship with God, which is Abraham and Abraham tithing. But show me in the Bible where Abraham tithed maybe more than once or maybe twice. Every week. Because when he did that tithe and gave to the unknown king, Melchizedek, that didn't have a birth date, nobody know where the hell he came from. Which sounds like that sound to me, that sounds like knowing everything that I know now. That sounds like somebody that was reincarnated that came back and they didn't have a birth date. Nobody knew when they was born. Nobody knew their parents. Nobody knew nothing. They just showed up on planet earth and disappeared. Then Melchizedek, King Melchizedek, who was King Melchizedek uh, uh, enough for Abraham, who was in covenant with God to tithe to him. And that was after a war. That was after the he had got the spoils. That wasn't like he was digging in his wallet. Like, okay, I'm going to try to give you a, I, I'm going to hook you up. I'm going to put it on my credit card. No. He had just came off the battlefield and won the spoils and then gave a tenth of that to Melchizedek. Let's not get it twisted. So I need people to really like empower themselves, dig deeper. And do what the Bible say, if you want to be a Christian especially, do what the Bible say and study to show yourself approved. Because tithe does not necessarily all, uh, it's not all wrapped up and summed up in finances and money. Because people live their whole lives washing the toilets of the church building, washing the windows and the glass and vacuuming the floors and cleaning up behind folks. And painting the walls and putting up speakers and hooking up electricity and and running meetings for the bishop and the apostle and the minister and the pastor and singing in the choir their whole life ain't got paid nothing. They're tithing, though. Need you to show up every Tuesday, every Wednesday and then every service. So, no, no. Like I need I need. I need folks to really like get a handle on this. I'm gonna need those people bills to never, ever, ever go down. Right. I'm gonna need them people bills to never, ever, ever, ever go down. To never be behind on nothing. You should be flourishing and be able to give whenever the minister says we got a number. Because I don't even know if people still do that. We that house supposed to make sure that that was that's taken care of. Okay. Because my thing is. When you really think, and then let's go after this. Because it, it be said that you take care of God's house, he'll take care of your house. Yeah, <laughs> you take care of God's house. This is God's house. You are God's house. Take care of this house. Take care of that house. And then, right, God will take care of you because you are God. Because there's people that are still struggling that's been taking care of God's house and sweeping and mopping and cleaning and all that for 20 years. And they're still in the same place that they was. Mm-hmm. When they first start, or probably in worse situation, yeah, you never know. Yeah, who was that that said that? Somebody said something. Is is like real? What did they say? Um, then we gonna wrap it thank up. Thank you for sharing a different light because at this point in my life, I'm really lost in my spirit. Never felt comfortable in church. Wrong energy. Thanks for your uh, your, your blessing. blessing. You can let's, yeah. Let's say you was lost. Right. Let's you just say that lost. you were lost. You're yeah, not you, lost now. You you used to be lost. Right. But you're on a pathway. Because this is the thing. You say you used to be lost, but mm -hmm. apparently you weren't. It's no coincidences mm -hmm. because you're here. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm in the other camera. My bad. <laughs> Thank you for pulling me in. Uh -huh. Because um, you're here. Mm -hmm. It's literally no coincidences. So, no, you were not lost. Like, literally, you were you were on your way being found because mm -hmm. what you are seeking is really seeking you right at the end of the day them questions that people put into the atmosphere <laughs> stuff is gonna materialize Ooh, you man. just decide like mm -hmm. i always say again either you're gonna be like the man on will smith where uh you expecting it to come in the, the way it's supposed to come in a box mm -hmm. or you just gonna allow it to be attracted to you the way it naturally is supposed to be attracted to you not being attached to how just know what it is yeah you see i'll say this then we let you guys go at the end of the day we do this because we want people to empower themselves so that they will not be stuck in bondage not be left in darkness okay 
you won't be in darkness. You'll have the opportunity to to enlighten yourself, illuminate. People are like oh, Illuminati. Ain't nothing wrong with it. if you. In, I mean, it, again, you want to take the term. What am I using the term for? I'm gonna use it for good because I'm I'm a light bearer. I'm moving towards the light and not darkness. Illumination. So if somebody said you an Illuminati, I get I guess so. Well, thing, My though, version in of order it. To get to the light, you gotta go to the dark. You gotta go through the dark. Yes. You still Everybody have to deal has positive and negative inside mm-hmm. of them. Everybody mm-hmm. has high vibration and low vibration inside of them. It's mm-hmm. just what they allow uh to to attach themselves and what they allow themselves to move in. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's but we truth. all have it. We all have it. It's up to us. Mm-hmm. It's up to us to decide yeah. which way we gonna vibrate today. Yeah. <laughs> so, with that being said, we hope you guys did get something. I know I went into uh, uh, I went into depth about what probably felt like didn't matter at all, but it's definitely all tied in. And first, to I each was other. like, "Where he going with this?" Yeah. Okay. But when we get into part three of this, wow, that was your chest plate. Oh, just woo, that was popped. good. <laughs> I didn't even have no control over that okay, one. Okay, <laughs> so on that, family, we love y'all. <laughs> I didn't have no control over that, could y'all tell? <laughs> we love y'all. Uh, we really do care about y'all. For real. Damn. Um. <laughs> I know I'm it stretching is what out. it is. Uh, we about to be is naive all the way is naive. Okay, um, we 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 out. We love y'all, and uh, we'll see y'all when what next week, right? Yeah, we might come back tomorrow or the day after. Like yeah, bamboo, just on a, just yeah depends. for this, but yeah, yeah, it just depends on how we feel. Or but, we might. Yeah, yeah, we gonna see because like mm-hmm. I'm gonna go to sleep and then. I'm going to wake up early in the morning, and then if I can get to studying, then we can probably come back tomorrow or the next day. But we'll let y'all know. It's cool. For sure. Yeah, we, we need, we, we're we, we supposed to be getting on the schedule so that we can just email y'all schedule and say, we're going to come on these days, they, those days, and these times or whatever. But that's in the future. I ain't going to lie to y'all and tell y'all that's going to happen this week because it's not. Right. We're working towards it. So we love y'all. And I'm and I was off the camera again. <laughs> okay, okay, yes. <laughs> Love y'all. Right. Good night. All right now. We appreciate y'all. We'll see y'all again. All righty. Y'all Love have a good too, one. Man. Lori. Yep. All right.